Hello. Boop, Not yet. Boop. Hello. Boop, boop. Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Gotta wait for the boop boops. <laughs> oh no, I can hear myself. Shit, I didn't didn't mute it in time. Back. <laughs> oh, I hate yeah. that. Hello, and welcome to an episode. An episode, yeah. An episode. Uh, an episode do, we have a, do we have a number? Oh, 58. 58. I was fifty-seven yeah. last week. That makes sense. Fifty-eight <laughs> this week. A lot of uh, a lot of stuff has happened uh, in episodes. the last week. Uh, <laughs> anyway, we're gonna play some Dungeons and Dras- Drastons. Drastons. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, we're gonna play some Drastons and Dungeons. Um, Us and humans. We're gonna play some Dungeons and Dragons. We're gonna play some more Housebound Adventuring. Last week. I will summarize what we happened last week, but first we will begin with our prompts because I forgot that I'd like to tell. I'd like to tell you what our players are giving us for prompts today. Then I summarize. Then we do the prompts. It's very rushed today. I apologize. Okay, so our prompts for today are, and both of these were these were given to us by our lovely viewing community. Love you guys. The first one is it's happening. Your character's favorite musician slash band slash whatever is coming to town. What kind of music does the group play? It's given to us by Grace. And how does your character celebrate their birthday? Which was given to us by Noko. I like those prompts very much. I think they're very, very good. Mm -hmm. So we'll be doing those prompts. But before that, I'll give you a little summary of what happened last week. It was, uh, there was a lot less to describe last week because we've got this wonderful point where we're in between confusing quests so my my summaries at the beginning can be <laughs> much shorter than me having to describe ansia and the monastery and all of that shit before we get to it we're on a we're on a trip we're on a little trip from immersy over to eventually waymoot a place deep in the king's forest in cormir and as we are on the road we've stopped at a small town called mouth of gargoyles um, you might think it is Mouth of Gargoyles, but it's not. It's Mouth of Gargoyles. Um, and whilst we were on the road here, we received a an important message from uh, Gary Sariel, who... Uh, sigh. Okay. Uh, sigh. <laughs> Swoon. <laughs> Who's rather read to the completionists. I hope this note finds you well. I asked a royal war wizard to locate you as a favour. In a meeting of otherwise no import, I overheard a summary that some unsavoury sorts in the king's forest have been on the lookout for a half-elf lady in mixed company that included a giant bat. That sort of thing tends to stick out, and I thought of you. Though I know not why they seek you, I would urge you to be careful with whose company you keep, or to be on your guard. Though, if you are in the area, the purple dragons are holding their hunting trials near Waymoot. You would be excellent candidates, I'm sure. Sincerest regards, Garius Sariel. The party has bumped into Garius a couple of times. Uh, he is Sincerous. a. I'm sorry. <laughs> he is a super duper good looking knight of the purple dragon knight order. Uh, who seems to be pretty high up in their ranks and has bumped into the party a couple of times, sometimes giving them boons, sometimes just being a generally nice lad. Um, and in this time, he is, he's kind of alerted to our party to perhaps some danger deep in, in the King's Forest, which unfortunately just happens to be where our party are headed as they are going to uh, the, the dragon hunting trials that were mentioned in the letter. Along the trip so far, we met a, uh, well, we had a, a relatively quiet time, but we did bump into a troll who was guarding a bridge, a stereotypical manner, just outside of Mouth of Gargoyles, who, clad in additional limbs, uh, <laughs> climbed out of their river and said, Give thing! Seems that they wanted payment, but they didn't want coins. So each of our party members just palmed off some of their shit that they didn't want in their inventory <laughs> apart from haiku who was very nearly about to start a fight with the poor innocent little troll uh, <laughs> until oro stepped in and said i've got i got two things i'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you two things because uh, oro and the troll managed to have a, they managed to converse in a common tongue that they spoke which was giant 
heading into way uh, sorry not way mouth of gargoyles you uh found it to be a relatively quiet village in the center of the king's forest not center in the king's forest um and you noticed that there was a little puppet show that was being played that appeared to be telling some story about some fantastical adventurers who uh took on some uh some unruly pirates who were uh, manipulating a giant sea monster into doing their deeds um and there was a sea shanty and everyone had a fun time mm-hmm. and then you guys headed into the uh into the tavern uh which is called the gargoyle's tail with an a-i-l um in the hopes of basically just sleeping the night so you can get out of there continue with your journey but the innkeep and one of the other gentlemen in the in the bar seemed to uh, say that maybe stick around a little bit. We've seen some gargoyles flapping around and they seemed very against the gargoyles and whatever the gargoyle stood for, but they were very unclear about why and they couldn't seem to, to pin it down. They were very vague about the whole thing. They just seemed to say gargoyles bad. Um, some of you had some hypotheses about why that was, but it boiled down to basically you guys are going to stick around for the night and uh, maybe spend some extra hours for Haiku reading their book. Because, you know, got plenty more hours to sink into that bad boy. <laughs> so we've got a grumpy Haiku. Thank you, Docs. Oh, the character sheet's up. I literally wrote down uh, in my notes, I was like, put the fucking link to character sheets. I forgot to do that before yeah, the game. <laughs> I just remembered. I'll, I'll make the commands. I don't want to be too distracting. Oh, my God. So uh, Docs has found a way of um, putting all our character sheets in an easy-peasy HTML document. So if anyone wants to look at our stuff and our, you know, inventories and our abilities and stuff, have a look. Mine has a load of shit on it, so hope hope that'll be enjoyable to someone. <laughs> be like, why the fuck is all this written down? Don't know. It just is. <laughs> It'd be like that. They uh, th- they are not real time updated. They are manually updated. So yeah. don't expect it to be perfect. Perhaps people have prepared different spells or whatever. Um, but it's still a very cool little thing, especially because since we're using Roll Twenty and not D and D Beyond, um, which so we don't have a little a little plugin or anything. Mm. But it's still very neat. So if you fancy having a look at our characters, you can do so with the commands that. Doxy is making, I guess, here. Yeah. Or are they already made? Uh, the Oro... Uh, I think some might already exist. The Oro one can be changed now. The Oro one's really old. Okay. Just to edit that one, I guess. I we can, we can, we can, we can, we can make them as we go. There's no rush to get yeah, them all yeah. done now. Oh, I, I need to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I need to do it. There's, a, there's an itch in my brain that I can't scratch until it's done. <laughs> I'd start it. Don't have to. Don't start, dude. Okay. I'll just quietly do it. It's fine. <laughs> Listen, I expect all my players to be playing full attention all the time. Oh, he says, as a player who cannot pay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, as a player, cannot pay full attention all the time. I fully understand. Okay. We've arrived at Mouth of Gargoyles. You guys have had one night's sleep with some cheap rooms. Fortunately, these people aren't trying to rip you off, or at least benefit off of your inflated income um and you've you've slept the night you've recovered all of your expended spell slots if you had spent any uh, as well as your hit die you are awoken by the uh soft rising sun as it kind of twinkles through the uh the treetops through the uh, the boughs uh, the, the leaves and into your window spattering across your pillows um, which is either down to you whether it's a lovely thing to wake up to or a really annoying thing uh, I suspect Haiku maybe isn't a big fan considering they are perpetually grumpy at the moment <laughs> but regardless they both smiled can... last night That's they true. did after you all, you all wonderfully had purchased extra snacks just for Haiku without <laughs> telling each other you all separately <laughs> did it and then you arrived at the table and said I'm going to give Haiku this extra, what was it, a, a pastry that you'd purchased. Yeah. What about this extra, extra pastry? Tear and share. Oh, baby. <laughs> good stuff. 
the good <laughs> stuff. Pull good apart. I was like something <laughs> along those lines. Well, Sam and Taryn shout you handed off to, to Haiku. And you'd all done that independently without talking to each other. You'd all bought Haiku a snack. It was very it was very cute. cute. <laughs> and I literally really she had written down in my notes, Haiku feels loved. Oh, oh! <laughs> that's cute. My heart. <laughs> Well, playing games are kind of weird, huh? Um, <laughs> okay. So you wake up this morning feeling the way you feel. You tell me. But you convene uh, for breakfast. Downstairs. I wake up in the morning feeling like P. Diddy. <laughs> like P. Diddy. Like P. Diddy. Uh, but you're together. Diddy, you pee the bed. <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> I'm I'm try, try a new thing. <laughs> um, how are you all doing this morning? Uh, hold on, I'm just rolling. Uh, two D ten. Good. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm pretty happy. Yeah, thirteen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still reeling about that cute event last night. Yeah. Still feel pretty good about that. <laughs> But the rest so of us are a little bit, little bit concerned about the whole, you know, gaining ten years of age instantaneously. Mm. Oh yeah, we didn't really react to that. Uh, well, the, you probably uh, still haven't noticed. I'm not sure if Randall has said anything yet. Yeah, maybe we're all just like looking at you. Like whenever we're talking, we're like looking at you. Like <laughs> something's off. <laughs> and and with the with the blindfold on, like how much can we even really tell? Because yeah, normally yeah, age yeah. It happens around the eyes first. I, know, I mean, like I said, like like I've described previously, Randall only really noticed because, you know, you look at your own face and recognize who you are as a person. Hmm. Whereas other people, you know, it could have been that you did something different with your hair, who knows? <laughs> with, with your hair, is bald. Is bald. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And how old is Randall like now? 42. I think I added a year because... We've been adventuring for like a year, I think, mm. as well. So I just added an extra year. Oh. Oh, yeah. You know what? I should do that too. Probably a good idea. Because we spent like six months in the house at some point. Yep. Yeah. Wait, how old are, how old are the rest of you? I don't think I've ever asked. You can't really young. ask. Yeah, um, Aura's also pretty young. Aura is 18, I think. Yeah, she's 18. Aura's like a teenager, but for goblins. Yeah, yeah. No, I think. Wait, is she? I think. I think you. I think you had her at a younger age, and you aged her up because you thought being under eighteen was a bit weird. Yeah, I think I wanted her to be sixteen because goblin ages are like they die a lot younger. Yeah, they're like mm. considered adults at like seven. Yeah, yeah. So, but I wanted to make it a normal like human age that wasn't like mm. weird for them being. I think it was a good call. I think you made mm. the right thing. So. Yeah, agree. Agree. Mm. I'd have felt real weird a lot of the times with, with the erotic attack. <laughs> yeah, that's that's why that's why I went with that because she was eighteen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I remember, it was an over eighteen stream. <laughs> mm. uh, I How think old is Nerly? Uh, you know, what? I probably have that actually in my notes down to the number. Um, I was the like, one thing that you don't have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that she's like real young. Yeah, the one thing I don't have in this like four page document. <laughs> to be fair, some of the space is taken up by pictures. There were references for an artist. <laughs> have her height down. I think she is doesn't exactly know. No. Because I think the thing is, she doesn't exactly know how old she is, but mm. um, especially if she's a half elf, like it's kind of hard to tell, you know. Um, but she's under the impression that she's like 18, 19. So I guess like we'll say like 19 now after being together. Randa okay. feels even more old. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how old's Haiku? Uh, I had Haiku as. Cracking on a fair bit. You know, they've been traveling quite a while. That's a lot of years of shit. <laughs> in the uh, I think I had them in the late forties ish. How long do uh, turtles live? I mean, the the thing that doesn't have turtles to live very old. They live to like fifty or sixty or something like that. But I, I, to me, that doesn't make much sense because like turtles and tortoises in real life live for ages. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. A, a, a turtle person should 
reflect that. I mean, there I are there uh, have a go with personally. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I <laughs> tend to ignore stats like that <laughs> when mm. it comes to. But I mean, when you become adventurers, you take on a certain amount of you know uh, power in yourself, as you know, many in, often in arcane ways that yeah. circumvent things like. I mean, especially for Randall, who is a monk, you know, it gets to a certain point where that kind of stuff doesn't really matter. Um, but well, I mean, yeah, I, I, if you think your uh, your character is super duper old, you're grand. I, it is nice to have a, a benchmark of our usual human age standards for stuff like hitting eighteen. But apart from that, who cares? Uh- <laughs> I do love though that there's like two in their 40s and two that are like not even yeah. they're like teenagers mm-hmm. like <laughs> late teenagers obviously but mm-hmm. like it's just funny okay okay cool so let's go let's go back to uh, let's go back to how you're feeling this morning Aura's is doing all right yeah randall uh yeah just a little bit like bewildered about being older i'm um, like so much older suddenly and maybe mm-hmm. also like while he's attuned to the bandage it's still like he can still like feel it a lot like moving around and it's not like because mm. i've kind of got that sensory and so it's maybe a little bit like irritated by that is 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 yeah. randall's age something he's uh he's likely to feel sensitive about uh i don't know probably not super sensitive but it's more of like could that happen again like mm. you know mm. because if it happens again then it's 52 <laughs> okay okay uh, how about haiku how's haiku doing this morning we've we've gone back to grumpiness i'll be honest uh did a bit did a bit more reading before bed yeah did you count down the hours i did yeah yeah how many we got left uh well not 36 so that's 12 left Ooh, the all right next two yeah two days left or two and a half days if we really pick it oh so you've got a you've got a Really sit down. Yeah. My today's six reading. hours. It's only six hours a day. I stop that. It's easy. Six hours a day. It's <laughs> only six hours every day already. <laughs> uh, okay. okay. How's Neroli doing today? Pretty good. She's yeah. still a little confused as to why everyone in the town doesn't really like understand what's actually going on outside of their town that they need help with, but she's kind of like operating under the assumption that this is the Enclave or this is. Um, not Caspian. Yeah. Ca- no, what's his name? Caspian? Caspian Kinshire. Yeah. Kinshire. Okay, that's right. I was like, I forgot the freaking guy's name. <laughs> it's happening in real life. Oh, no. This is, this is, a- <laughs> <laughs> this is what ADHD. happens when you have just a, a, a very broad story that happens on in the background of other smaller modular quests that you're doing as you go around. It's not in the forefront of your mind all the, all the time, so it's easier to, for this kind of stuff to to slip by you well and it's weird because uh, the name caspian kinchar was exactly what came to mind and i was like mm, that doesn't sound right <laughs> <laughs> okay brain so what do, what do our uh what understanding do each of our characters have about the caspian kinshire overarching story where where are we each as our characters at also, by the way, we completely forgot to do prompts. Mm-hmm. Yes, I was going to bring that up, but I didn't know if you were yeah. coming back to it. or <laughs> Like after yeah. we talked about how we were feeling, maybe we'd do prompts. <laughs> yeah, all right, let's do that. Let's do that. We'll do that. Okay. I'm just very glad that you guys all noticed, and I only just noticed now. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> One of us would probably have been like, prompts? No, J- Jack would have mentioned it like an hour and a half into the game. <laughs> In chat. <laughs> <laughs> Out. Cool, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sounds Shots like a very fired. specific thing that exactly that you're that's exactly what happened the last time i forgot one of our props <laughs> precisely uh but no i just I'm, don't I'm, want to interrupt no i know i know i know you're just being polite but i know you're just being polite. uh but i am curious about this what what do i i mean it's easy for me to uh, quiz you as players but what specifically do your characters know are they as invested as Randall is, are they just kind of along for the ride because Randall is, or do they just not have any fucking idea? Uh, I go ahead. Oro's invested, uh, but also like this seems like a big problem. I don't think I can wrap my tiny brain around this. Seems bad. Do what Randall wants to do. 
Okay. Following okay. following the bad vibes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. How about haiku? Uh, haiku, like myself, is still somewhat confused by it all. <laughs> Understandably, yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, even even with someone as intelligent as haiku. Uh... <laughs> How does that make haiku feel? <laughs> Used. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, 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 it pops up every now and then in conversation and they're just like what, <laughs> what? <laughs> but, but but like not not wanting to ask sure to, to, to look like they don't understand oh it's been too oh, long oh, now. just just, yeah. just a nod a nod oh oh yeah yeah yes, yeah, that's yeah, 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 yeah 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 <laughs> yeah okay okay so where's where's nearly at Nearly is muted. Nearly is very muted. <laughs> you know, it just happens. Um, uh, she, uh, she knows that Thistle thinks it's a problem, and Thistle seems very powerful and knowledgeable. And um, although very, um, like quirky and interesting, she trusts that there's like a power to her that we don't understand given everything they've seen, like her appearing out of a fucking portal and handing off this flower to her and being like, thanks little crystal, goodbye. And we're just like, <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> um, so she understands that like history is being deleted somehow. Um, I, I don't think she has any idea like how that's happening, but it's just kind of like something that she's on the watch out for because this will just seems, I don't know. I think, I think she's kind of like, very impressed with Thistle and like the idea that like she could have just come across this being that seems so powerful has like left a mark on her. She's not hmm. like infatuated with her, but she's definitely just like, uh, I don't know if I trust her intentions, but I trust that she knows something's going on sure, because yeah, she yeah. seemed concerned with it. Okay. How about Randall? Uh, so I think, I think Randall has the has the thing where it's like uh, everything is kind of a distraction, and then occasionally when there's like a small gap, he's like, "Oh yeah, all that's going on, isn't it?" And <laughs> just like remembers all of the other stuff that's going on. <laughs> but I think is Randall is Randall keeping like consistent notes of all of the Caspian related shit that comes up. Yeah, because like he, like I think I think the bit that like really speaks to him is like the uh, like losing that not like that story effectively like losing that knowledge because it's sort of you know called to him mm. to like sure the world might be in danger but isn't it sad that that, that whole thing is just disappearing and like has this happened before has there, are there other parts of history that have just been completely erased that nobody knows oh, anymore that's a good question that's Ooh. a damn good question <laughs> dm furiously writes notes <laughs> <laughs> or scrolls through previous notes dude if you're yeah, like anyone looking away. <laughs> Anyone looking to DM, there is no better advice to take than like listen to your players conspiracy <laughs> theories because sometimes you're just gonna be like, Oh, that's a good all right. <laughs> Make a note of that. <laughs> it's been there have been times in the in the past where you guys have asked you you've like stumbled on something and I've been like, shit, they've they've figured out something way early. And then time's passed and you've forgotten. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <it's> like, <laughs> The completionists. Oh we will forget. <laughs> Just that, that like, burr, 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 sound back <laughs> in the background, like. Okay, we well, did it, right? We did, we, did uh, <laughs> we did do it, right? We did do that. All right, well, let's go to our prompts. Uh, we almost forgot them, uh, but it's nice that we had a little bit of a pause because Grace has arrived, and one of these prompts is from Grace. So oh. we've got two prompts for today. One's from Grace, one's from Noko. The first one is. It's happening. Your character's favorite musician slash band slash whatever is coming to town. What kind of music does this group play? We'll start with Neroli from the top. Oh, gosh. I, I think that she probably wouldn't necessarily have like a favorite musician, right? Because she she's only kind of like been in the world for about a year, um, mm. like realistically. And I think she hasn't had a whole lot of time to like really take in uh what like the music scene might be in a big town so i think for her um anything that seems unusual or exciting would like fit that prompt for her and um what was it second question was the way they act or the way they react to it right no no just uh it's, it's just that they're they're coming to town like what kind of music does this 
Oh, what kind of, okay. Um, I think any, any spectacle that, um, was like interesting to her that included something she hadn't seen before. Like it's all like discovery for her yeah, um, as cute. opposed to, yeah. So just like taking in all of the new stuff. And how does Nerly celebrate their birthday? Um, hasn't really done a whole lot, uh, ever a little bit, like a little, little bit of like sweet bread or something at the, the end of the day, but there was never too much of an emphasis on the birthday. Cause we're not like, we, we're pretty sure we know like roughly when it is. Sure. Um, and now she's going to count the day that she got this dress thing for sure as oh, um, yeah? her birthday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's cute. All right. Well, if you guys want your, your character's birthday party celebrated at any point during these games, you're going to have to make it very clear to everybody when those birthdays are. <laughs> All right? Just like in real life. Okay, if you've got a birthday coming up, you let your friends know because sometimes they've got other shit going on and it slips by on the calendar. Anyway, uh, we're going to haiku. Hi. Haiku. It's happening. Favorite bands here. What kind of music do they play? Oh, yeah. It's a, a traditional total band who very oh. occasionally tour. Um, uh-huh. They play traditional total flutes and as such are called the scoot flutes. The scoot flutes. Very good. Wow. <laughs> very good. I spent a long time in that name. <laughs> oh, yeah, I like it. I like it. Okay, the scoot flutes. Okay. Is it very, well, what, how, I mean, what would we. Uh, associated with in, in 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 you know say the real world is it very upbeat up tempo or is it kind of eerie atmospheric uh, quite chill chill quite, it's chill quite slow pace and just a bit nice little bit of background music nice okay so there's no like mosh pits oh, at the scoot flute do you, do you try doing that with with shells <laughs> like, constantly bumping into that's a very good point <laughs> Okay, cool. And uh, how does Haiku celebrate their birthday? Uh, I, 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 I think they would probably forget about it most years. Not that they forget what day the birthday is. They just simply forget to celebrate it. But in the, the occasional time they do remember, fireworks. Oh, Makes right. Explode. <laughs> so like every, every, every couple of years when they actually do remember it, it's just mm. a huge firework yeah. display is it is it one sad firework or is it just like tons and tons of fireworks oh no it's it's an overly complicated contraption <laughs> yes i like on, that on, one. on the shell yes. <laughs> on the shell. <laughs> is it built with a timer on it that counts down to your birthday <laughs> <laughs> that's a good idea yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay cool randall what that's kind of music weird. is randall into um i don't so it's like uh I don't know what you'd call it, but it comes from like maybe like a traveling group who travel around like small villages and stuff. So like mm. there was like the play here, but like more musical. And I think the thing that really probably caught Randall's attention was like it's like Bard singing about like great adventures of pa- the, like the past and whatnot. Oh, okay, so Randall, like, Randall, through, Randall's like, favorite genre is kind of just bardic. I think so. Yeah. Uh, tale, tale, tale telling. Okay, yeah. that, I mean that's a I would I would count that as a musical genre in this case. That's awesome. Okay, um, that's and called heroic does... metal in the real world. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and how does Randall celebrate their birthday? Uh, I don't think Randall does a huge amount for their birthday. In fact, for their last ten birthdays, they've done nothing. <laughs> oh, because <laughs> oh, no. they all happened at once. Oh no, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, re- <laughs> yeah. uh, but mm-hmm. I think the rest of the time, I don't think it does a huge amount. Maybe you know some like some nice walks, or uh, maybe recalling like favorite stories or something, and some friends. A couple of drinks. Yeah. Very rare Very drinks. Rare. Uh, do, you, do, you, will, uh, do you think if... Have you have you told the party about your concerns about your age? Nope. No, you're keeping that to yourself? Yep. <laughs> Very quiet. Okay. okay. See if the party throws a big, like, 10 years... 10, <laughs> ten birthdays in one bash at the ten same time. 10 birthdays in one day. <laughs> All right. 
What's Aura's favourite music? Uh... Well, I mean, she grew up in a circus, so I feel like carnival music and like general happy sort of lots of musical instruments sort of music is what like she prefers or feels so is, comfortable. Is that something that she's she's like is like nostalgic, uncomfortable, or is that her favorite? I think all of the three. It's so nostalgic that it's like okay. it's like me with pop music from the early two yeah, thousands. Yeah. Like it's nostalgic, but also it's like hypes me up <laughs> like that don't think. I had this image of Oro just like being at a punk concert. I just, literally like... wrote down screamo music as well because I was like, screamo music would also be funny to put in there, but I don't know where I don't know where she would have heard that. <laughs> well, Maybe I mean, once a know, traveling band came to the circus that did screamo I, music well, the and they never got invited often... back, but Oro was like, whoa, <laughs> I like well, these. I think, you know, circuses circuses often do tour; they go to different places. So whilst your particular circus spent a lot of time in one place maybe maybe they did travel a little bit maybe they they went to different places maybe they picked up some traveling acts with them occasionally uh just screamo curious screamo curious <laughs> I, like that a lot. I could send her some good band recommendations <laughs> <laughs> also i i love the uh mongolian throat singing is actually fucking cool as shit uh hey tombo hello i'm not caught up on chat at all sorry uh, and how does Oro celebrate their birthday? I like to think that uh, every year someone from the circus like fills out a calendar of everyone's birthday so everyone knows when it's coming up and it's like a big event and everyone has like a party and the birthday person gets like a shit ton of popcorn for every meal that day or whatever the fuck they want <laughs> and everyone just goes all out on it. Is what I That's think very good. Happens. Yeah. Is there, has there, I mean, so you guys have been adventuring for a year now. Not Haiku was in a different party for some of that year, but <laughs> you guys have at least been you guys at least have been adventuring together as a for a year. Uh, do you think your your player characters have celebrated their birthday within this party, or is it something that's kind of just gone by the wayside? I think Aura probably would have pointed hers out. <laughs> yeah, and if she did, Nerly would definitely have like tried to do something depending upon where they were. Did we do anything? I know that like we found the dress thing in the um little temple like mm-hmm. together and then she was like, you know, this is it's my birthday because it's around the time she would have celebrated and it was clearly a gift with her mm-hmm. name on it. Um but I don't know if we did anything. I feel like was that why Oro bought me hot chocolate? No, that was early on. Yeah, no, yeah, was, yeah, yeah I didn't think so, yeah. No, we could pretend that we celebrated birthdays. That could be an RP prompt. <laughs> oh, I mean, this is this is this is fully, you know, back in we're, we're casting our minds back into a time that never happened. Now, but if you guys want to have said that you did stuff for your birthday, you said that you did stuff for your birthday. Should we all say our birthday was in the six months that we had off? <laughs> that was in the. <laughs> that I we think were it was probably more like. I feel like six months might be a little bit of a long a stretch on how long we took off. It was a couple of months, but most of the winter wasn't it? It was. Yeah, I think it was, it was just it was like, like three. Yeah. Yeah, it was like two or three months. Yeah. 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 But um, yeah, if you want to have your birthdays in there, then it's great. <laughs> I mean, Nerdy had her one in the spring or something, right? Was it spring when we started? I thought oh, we started summer. in the fall. The summer. Summer. Okay, so no, she's summer, the summer birthday. I accidentally watched the uh, the first VOD the other day when I was clicking through some videos. It was summer. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, how about Randall? Has Randall, has Randall <laughs> pointed that out at any point? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think you'd want... A big fuss or anything, but he probably did like some birthday like stuff without anyone really realizing because it probably looks exactly the same as a normal one. <laughs> I, I think Oro might have have really pushed yeah. you all to be like, When's your birthday? <laughs> okay. When is it? <laughs> I was gonna say, those seem awfully important to her. And after Oro gets super excited about it and wants to like plan stuff, then early is gonna be like, Oh my gosh, wait, you do stuff like this for birthdays? Holy hell. I hope Jay decided to tell us again, buddy. Hello. Uh, um, like I said, I'm very, I'm very behind on everybody in chat. Um, okay, that's cool. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Uh, I'm glad that we all had a chance to discuss that and now we can promote to everybody in chat if you have a birthday coming up tell your friends that your birthday is coming up (laughs) Uh, anyway (laughs) okay 
fantastic good prompts thank you everybody who's uh, who's uh, contributed prompts those prompts were from uh grace and noco uh, if you have like it's, we like to we like to do little prompts at the beginning of our games where it gives us a chance to get into our characters um and it's difficult to come up with them so if you think you've got a good one feel free to submit it uh Grace currently, I think, still has the highest score with a just uh, a metric buttload of submissions. Thank you very much, Grace. <laughs> There's some really good ones in there. And uh, yeah, okay. so many good ones. Like, yeah, they're really good. Very good. You've got a talent for it. Mm -hmm. uh, right. We 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 spend a lot of time on that. So let's get let's get going. <laughs> all right. You guys have woken up today feeling a spectrum of of goodness, but we've got a real grumpy haiku over here which is not surprising to really anybody at this point um <laughs> do you have a plan for the day you know that there is a vague question mark side quest here at the mouth of gargoyles uh you had a vague pointing in the direction of north from the barkeep when you spoke to them last night um kale crestbathen and that was the last interaction that you had about it. They basically said that if you don't do it, some other adventurer will come through here and get it done. The sooner the better. Um, but they seemed very kind of airheaded about it. It was really difficult to pin down any details about the quest. Mm -hmm. All they kind of vaguely said was that there was a cave uh, and that gargoyles were coming out of it. Um, which with you guys having a vague sense of this this overarching quest that you've had kind of running in the background is that people's stories keep getting deleted and then everyone seems to kind of vaguely have a memory problem around that um and this has happened multiple times now where you've gone and you've like, you've localized this this disruption and you've recognized that something somehow is 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 warped in history um, and it's it's given you given you tinglies, given your adventure tinglies. Uh, however, you've also still got a pending scheduled arrival at Waymoot. You're uh, you're on the road, and you've got you've been planning to get there for some time now. So, what do you want to do with your day? Um, if we're talking about it over breakfast, because I think last night we'd kind of decided that we were going to look into it, but there was mm -hmm. also a question of whether Haiku was going to stay and read while the three of us did that. Or am I making that up? Uh, no, I did some reading while you three watched the puppet show. That's what it was. That. Okay, JK. I, I thought if we weren't traveling, then Haiku would probably have more time in the evening to read rather yeah. than walking. That's the other thing that it was too. Mm. So they said, one of them said that they would take us after their shift mm -hmm. to the place. So I think that like whenever their shift the ends is kind of the plan. The dwarf, yes. Yeah. Okay. So they said uh, they, they they said that they would be there uh, at the gargoyle's tail in the morning, uh, and that if you were there, they would show you to the to the cave system. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so if you are still down there having your brunch and you fancy setting off early, then sure enough, after you finish your complimentary meal, what a, what a steal this place was. Imagine. Wow. Compared compared to your stay at Immersy, this is yeah. Amazing. It's yeah, it's almost Emmercy like they're trying everything. to lull us into a false sense of security. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to say, Doc? I'm it's sorry. almost like there's not a royal ship parked in the dock. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I'm kidding. I know, I know. You should just stay here in future. <laughs> yeah, I could. Every, I every could... time you want to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could live here for weeks. Week or I've two. got enough for days worth of Days worth of this. <laughs> Okay, so if you guys are all, you know, sitting together, having your having your breakfast, maybe Haiku's not sitting together. Maybe Haiku's on a different table. Uh, <laughs> There's better, light, better lighting on the other table. Yeah. <laughs> uh, surely enough, the uh, the dwarf that you spoke to yesterday kind of stumbles in, uh, and you can see that they they look very hungover. Uh, and they kind of don't stumble over to you immediately, but they walk in and they are rubbing their temples and they look rough. Uh, so they sit briefly at a stool by the uh, by the barkeep and they just they they point to you guys. <laughs> and they point back to the barkeep and they just say just and they point north and they just say, 
no. And they head back out of the tavern. Uh, and surely enough, Kale Crestbatham, the, the uh, dragonborn who was behind the bar yesterday, just says, I, I, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to take you to the cave, if that's okay. He's, yeah. he's, he's rough. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's okay. It's... But I just, uh, I've got a lot of work to do here, so could we do it now? Before everyone arrives, it's still early in the morning. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready to go. Yeah. We're ready. Right. Put the cinnamon tear and share in my bag. <laughs> no, can we, we can go now. Yeah. yeah. I write a second. Ike, are you ready? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're ready. Can Let's we go. go then? No, so we can go now? Yes, now. Yes. I write the second. You're all ready. Yes. <laughs> Every on. single one of you. Oh, yes. oh, yeah. Randall's already yeah. at the door. Like, so, oh, we're we're, so we can go now, yeah. yeah. We can yeah. go. We can leave. Come on. Let's go. Okay. Are right. you okay? All right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he, he, he takes off his um his apron, throws it on the bar. And uh like, like it, kind of, it, it makes sense because the bar is almost dead at this time in the morning, and he just kind of he 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 picks up uh a gnome who is kind of sleeping in his ale uh at, at a uh kind of a booth near the entrance of the tavern, just kind of picks him up and puts him outside of the tavern. Closes the door behind him and locks it. <laughs> uh, it's, it's fine. It's, it's okay. We're gonna. We're just gonna go. It's good. Twenty thirty minutes tops. And uh, surely what enough, this guy's name. This is Kale Crestbathon. K A E L. Mmm, delicious morning stale ale. Crestbathon, did you say? <laughs> Crestbathon. K R E S T B A T H O N. Okay. If you care about spelling, so I'm always like I'm always trying desperately to get uh, spelling correctly. When I'm when I like if I play as D- as a player, I'm always trying to guess precisely what the DM was actually trying to say. But never once have they given me a pop quiz on the spelling. <laughs> what the fuck? Not a single DM has ever asked me to do a spelling quiz. <laughs> it's more important for when I read it back and you go, who the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> Down wrong. <laughs> True. <laughs> okay. Well, surely enough, uh, Kale sends you, well, he, he, he walks you through the town of Martha Gargles. And I must say, this is, this, is, this is a very small uh, group of buildings, basically, that are uh, nestled around a giant well in the center of town that you, you saw last time you were here or i mean yesterday uh you saw in uh, in the evening because it was next to the uh the puppet show and surely enough north is where you are directed you walk for a little while along the river the star water uh, and for a while it's kind of mud tracks but surely enough it starts to be actually you're you're climbing up rocks in some cases it's there are grooves where people have been treading for hundreds of years, possibly. Uh, it looks nice and worn, but there are some parts of the pathway that are much less uh, well trodden. Big bushes that have kind of overgrown, and you have to carve your way through trees that have fallen on the path. But several moments give you pause to to reflect on the path that you've traveled so far. As you climb up a massive rock and look back down, you can see that actually this is way steeper than you expected you can see the tops of the buildings nestled between the trees and you can still hear the crackling of the river as it's down beside you uh it is way more than 30 minutes he drastically misunderestimated it you take about an hour but it's it's an hour mostly because of the effort you have to go through not so much because oro is there giving you very deftly easily making their way through the dense uh wood and Randall has no problem going through difficult terrain anyway uh, but mostly because you are having to wait for Kale. Kale is uh, not super fit and is struggling with this walk quite significantly um, but fortunately eventually you come to what looks like a giant cave opening it has uh, some form of, of small pathway that leads down the direct center of it but there are stalagmites and stalactites around the center around the the mouth of the cave itself that look like teeth um 
And it is, it is a very unusual rock formation that you would not find in real life, I imagine. Looking at you, Adam, leave me alone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but actually, well, actually, if, if you want to give me, uh, anyone got any nature roles? If you're interested in this? I think I do have nature, actually. Let me look. I don't got no nature. Got no nature. Oh, okay. just kidding. I definitely don't have nature. I, don't, I, don't. I was thinking of medicine. No, no nature rolls. Okay, that's fine. Um, in which case, I mean, you just take it as a as surface value. It looks like a looks like a big old mouth, which really makes a lot of sense considering the name of the place. Uh, you're a fair way out, but actually, you're. I mean, considering you've been on the you've been traveling for an hour, you're still fairly close to Mount of Gargoyles. If you look close enough, you can just see a small amount of smoke coming out of the trees just on the distance. It's because it's just been all uphill. It's been quite steep. Some of it's been rock climbing and I mean, it's, it's taken you a while. But sure enough, there is a giant cave opening directly in front of you. It looks dark and it looks damp. You can hear the trickling of what sounds to be a um, small stream. And you can tell from where you are uh, that there is definitely a, uh, the, the, like the river, the star water is not too distant from where you are currently. Um, but Kale turns to you and says, <sighs> I'm, I'm not. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not, I'm not going in there. Just if you could. I we think that the the gargoyles are probably probably cave. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna sit down. You go do adventuring stuff. We'd well, be all right out here. Yeah. I'm just gonna catch my breath. <sighs> okay. We'll just go in in the cave then. Guess so. Just just gonna go on in the cave. Go on in the cave. Just cautiously you... look into the cave. <laughs> <laughs> can we? Can we? Can you guys remind me uh, who's got dark vision, etc. Here. Uh, I think I've got dark vision as well. I, I think Randall's, <laughs> Randall's like, <laughs> I do now. Hello. <laughs> I can surely see goblins Randall do. Wherever it's 120 yeah. feet. Yeah, goblins do. Okay. So <laughs> yeah. the only person who doesn't does oh. is Haiku. Oh, it makes you know? stones glow, though. So, you know, who's the real winner? Okay. Winner? Okay. All right. Who's the real winner? All right, so you like step into the. Oh, yeah. if Haiku can't, if Haiku can't see, then Randall, I will offer you the uh, drift globe. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. You don't need to make a light. Right. It's a little. It's a little globe, and it just follows you around, and it lights up, lights you up. Ooh. I mean, I I, I won't fit out to that. Something <laughs> to put on the show. I don't. I don't need it anymore. Wow. I can see all the time. Yeah, Even my eyes are closed. closed. <laughs> oh, God. oh God, I can't stop seeing. It's a curse. It's a curse. <laughs> oh, why did yes. I do to this? I can't take it off. I can't take. It. Yeah, you've got blind sight now, so you literally can't just like close your eyes. Like you just have to always be seeing mm -hmm. the ten feet around you. Oh. Oh, <laughs> means I can't be surprised when I'm sleeping, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you're not conscious when you're sleeping, okay? You've got to be okay. conscious <laughs> to perceive things. If I was <laughs> if I was one of the races that does, doesn't actually sleep and just meditates, though. Oh, imagine. Imagine. <laughs> but, not. Uh, but you are, you're fine. <laughs> Everything's yeah. okay. So are we, are we plodding down into this cave? We're plodding what? Plodding down into this cave. I think we're going to peek in first. Oh, yeah, a little, did you get a little peek in? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh... So this, this cave formation looks old. It looks old. But it looks like there does appear to be some kind of trail, like I said, down the center of it. It gets dark real quick. Um, or like kind of almost the, the gradient of the darkness is just like jarring at a certain point. Um, and I mean, it's it's fine for those with dark vision. You can see past it, but it's it's still it's it's very dark. 
you've seen plenty of caves in your time and most of the time the is illuminated to a, to a greater extent um but the footing of the path seems stable enough it looks like you could probably walk downwards into it whilst you spent all this time climbing up this uh this this hill face it's now descending into this cave does the cave look like a gargoyle face and the opening is like the mouth is that why it's called mouth of gargoyles it, there is the the teeth on the top, like as in the uh, the the stalactites and stalactites, and the front of the cave definitely look like a mouth. Hmm. You know, I wonder before we go in, there may not even actually be gargoyles up here. I think this place might have gotten its name because of the way this looks. Didn't didn't Kale or someone say that they had spotted gargoyles there? They said people have seen them. There's some sort of history of the place with gargoyles and they couldn't really remember. But there was trouble. I think. Isn't that what they said? Is he still right behind us? Like, whilst we're looking yeah, at yeah. He's, I mean, he's, he's gone a little way down the path, but he's just found a place to sit that kind of looks over the trees. And he's just sat there like... <sighs> <laughs> Can he hear me if I shout at him? Okay. Yeah. Probably. Kale! What? <laughs> I can hear you from the other room. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Are there gargoyles in there? Yeah. Like, real actual ones? Probably. Okay, yeah, he seems to think right. there's actual problem. Yeah, that's fine, thanks. Okay. <laughs> Seems to think there's actual proper gargoyles. Actual proper ones. Well, Maybe. Be, be prepared for that then. Guess we'll find out. How oh. I... big is the so... entrance to the cave? The entrance is probably uh, 30 foot in radius. Okay. I feel like gargoyles are quite common. Would I know anything about gargoyles? Gargoyles c crop up in stories quite common, quite mm -hmm. commonly. You can give me a history check if you like. I would like. Do I get advantage? You get, if you you can you can have a history check, or if you'd like to learn more about them as as creatures, you can uh, do an Arcana check. Uh, do history. Okay. Do I get advantage because it's story based? No. <laughs> <laughs> The advantage that you get is your proficiency. <laughs> <laughs> I want more advantage. <laughs> well, remember, I, I'm Routine. giving. I'm, I, if you have proficiency in something, you uh, you get details that other people would not be getting. Okay, uh, I have proficiency in history. So your recollection of various stories involving gargoyles lets you recognize that they are often uh, statues. Mm -hmm. that animate in some way often they are uh stone winged beasts with gnarled faces that are grimaced uh, and they are a way to kind of ward away travelers or visitors or or evil depending on the story um but almost always gargoyles end up attacking and killing someone and flying off with them in the night there are very in fact there are not a single story that you can remember involves gargoyles being the good guy God, gargoyles aren't the good guys. <laughs> Remember that, everybody. Guys. Although they tend to, I think, I only really ever read about them being active at night. So maybe, maybe they're sleeping in there. I don't know if they sleep, when, but or maybe this is a huge gargoyle. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord, I hope not. Well, if they're sleeping, that would make it easier, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're also made of stone. So, how do you kill something mm. made of stone? Is it, it magical stone? Well, I mean, it's like an animated stone. I don't, I don't, I don't know. It's not like a mechanoid or a, a contraption. Like Is there a saucy maybe, story so. about a gargoyle and the overskill? I... Oh, 
<laughs> Gotta get those advantages somewhere. Adam. <laughs> Some kind of rock joke in here somewhere. <laughs> I don't want to say it. So. <laughs> Shall we just go in? Then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's go carefully. Who's going first? Um, I think Randall might go first, just because like he's not used to being able to see in the cave and it's like maybe filling him with a bit too much confidence. It's like, yeah. Mm. I can see. <laughs> I got yeah. this. Okay. Well, sure enough, there is a uh, a pathway down that's easy enough, especially for Randall to, to to step down without having any issues. But you can tell that the the rock is a bit slippy, a bit wet, especially since it's still early in the morning. Mm -hmm. Um so there's a little bit of like dew and stuff that's fallen down here. Um, but you are a okay. We have um, a couple of dexterity rolls from Haiku and, and Neurally. Does that seem fair? Yeah, it is. Do we have advantage because <laughs> we're traveling with a ranger? Yes, you do. Yeah. <laughs> so this isn't a save. This is just a dex check. Sure. Okay. Oh, it doesn't matter for me either way. Well, ooh. Not great. Okay, well, Haiku has done astoundingly well, considering. <laughs> considering <laughs> minus one. Minus minus one. one. <laughs> okay. Lots of traction. Well, sure enough, the rest of you uh, seem to, to find your way down. Sure enough footing to tread down into the mouth of the cave without any issues. But nearly... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Gallic, for the hundred bits. That was very well timed. Uh, I'm in danger. I forgot to. <laughs> I'm in danger. I need <laughs> to open the thing. Oh, oh, we got the precise. The precise. Just I was about to describe nearly slipping and falling. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm in danger. Uh, nearly, sure enough, does lose her footing at one moment. We're, what we're going to say is that haiku in their steadfastness and just sheer stubbornness today. I feel like if you're a stubborn, if you're, if you're grumpy, you're stubborn. It's just a nature. Oh, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's in your nature. Mm. And I mean, you are in this particular instance, sturdy as fuck. You've successfully managed to just wedge yourself between one stalagmite that just happens to be in the right position for you to see Nurly just about slip. You see her <laughs> foot go up. <laughs> and as her foot goes up you just you're just like i don't have it in me today to deal with this kind of shit <laughs> and you just grab her ankle and whilst, whilst she's got her it. one foot up she's just about to start slipping down into the into the cave and you grab her ankle and her foot and then turn yourself to grab like the collar up here and, and you mm. just got both hands on her like this and she's like oh, huh? <laughs> oh, okay and you're just holding her in place like <laughs> not today okay not today i got enough of this shit none of All these right. shenanigans <laughs> <laughs> not today you managed to successfully just just remove the the slippiness of the uh of the occasion and save nearly from herself uh thank and... you <laughs> Sort of give it just a, just a nod. I think that's all that's needed. It's the best that she gets. It's the best she gets. Okay. I want to clarify <laughs> that it's not sexual. <laughs> <laughs> Going down into this moist cave. Uh, I'm getting all any right. Of these sounds. So okay. the <laughs> little browser. Oh, I've got I've got three back browsers open. It's not working anyway. Three oh. browsers and it's not working in any of them. Oh my god! Is this your brand new computer as well? Yeah. Take it back. Uh, uh, mine has <laughs> to be done in Chrome. I think everybody else said they, theirs had to be Firefox, so maybe Chrome will yeah. work for you. Firefox. I got, I got Chrome, Edge, and Firefox. Open. How are oh not is it? Are you playing audio? Oh, are you not, they're not muted, right? <laughs> no, they're not muted. <laughs> Did you go and um, like uh, when she tested it one time, it gave me the option to allow audio because it automatically blocked it on Chrome. And you did that. Did you allow yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all Dang. There's got to be some permission somewhere. There's got to be yeah. a permission somewhere. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, the the tunnels it acts almost like a little funnel. Actually, there there's not a lot of um, kind of uh, deviation from the path. Um, and sure enough, at one point you do almost hit a wall of darkness 
this the point at which I described the the, the light in this cave, just the gradient getting very severe at a certain phase. You just something about it seems off. There is a thickness in the air, and there is just the 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 lighting doesn't add up. Something about the way that the light is hitting the mouth of the cave shouldn't really be stopping you seeing better at this point. Um, but there's no physical, tangible thing in front of you. Does Randall notice that? Um, I mean, we haven't really discussed in depth about how your, your blind sight works. What do you think? I feel like if it's only an effect of like light and there's no fogginess or physical manifestation sure. of it, he yeah, wouldn't yeah. be able to see it. Okay, all right. In which case, Randall does not. And Rand Randall's in the front, right? Yep. Just, I'm going to just carry on going. Just power on through. Mm -hmm. Power on through. Wait, do we, do we notice? narrow down here. Do, do we notice? Narrow down here. <laughs> yeah, you guys see it, yeah. Clear as day. Well, not clear as day. Clear as, clear as a, a rapid evening, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> so what, what we see is basically like a dark that's darker than dark. You see, you see uh, that the uh, the lighting in the cave takes a sudden and stark contrast that is that you think is uncharacteristic for the other for, the, for how this cave should be looking. Does it look inky? It does not look inky. Okay. Palpable disappointment. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> um. Randall's it... powered on through. Randall, come back here. <laughs> Why? What? That dark look, this look, this bit looks different to that bit. You guys see that? Okay. It, it just looks like a cave. It's a different kind There's of dark. There's something down here. It just gets a bit narrow. Mm. No. It just looks weird over there. Have I already gone through the weird bit or have yep. I not made it there? No, no, okay. you went through it. Okay. Did I did I feel anything? Caves can fine, come on down. And and we it's know fine. how his, his come on in. Uh, fine. blindfold and come on in the cave's fine. Um, <laughs> well, um we know how the blindfold works, right? He's explained it to us. Vaguely. Yeah. Unless you want to explain how what your character is has told our other players about are your other characters about your your new visual senses? Oh, I not think visual he, senses. I think you probably would, because like for a long time, Randall's the only character who couldn't see in the party in the dark, mm. and I was like, I can be like you now. I can I can see in the dark now. Sick. You can't mm. see the difference between these two darks. Well, I can only I can't see the dark anymore. Hmm. <gasps> <laughs> There's so. <laughs> stage whispering because we're in this cave now um she's going to speak very quietly which for nearly is quite quiet um quite quiet um she just kind of like is listening to the conversation and then goes <gasps> okay so there's a bit of magic that i didn't decide to learn or like really develop at all but it can make it so dark that even people who can normally see in the dark can't see and I wonder if that's what's happening over there. Because if this blindfold thing is magic and can help you see, maybe he can just see through it and we can't. I step into the pitch black, into the dark. Immediately, end. it is absolutely impenetrable for you. You cannot see shit. I step it back. It is absurd. <laughs> <laughs> can you give me a dexterity saving throw as you step back? 20. You're fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you kind of have this like this gentle wall that almost like it, it's a it's a darkness, but it's from outside. It doesn't look that intense, but you step over this line and it's just darkness. Like everything just goes. And then you step back and you're like, that was unpleasant. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, guys, that's like pitch black. That's like, I can't see. I can't see anything in there. Oh, I, I can see. Like it's just normal cave. It does. It's just cave. No, it's pitch black. Yeah, yeah. From this point on, pitch black. <laughs> yeah, I think it's. I mean, I don't know exactly what it is, but I know that there's a way to do that with magic that wouldn't normally 
allow people to see in it, but you have magic eyes now or something, so. You've got whatever this is. <laughs> <laughs> You've got magic eyes and that blindfold too. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Look, look with your magic eyes. <laughs> My brand. <laughs> So, well, can, can, what if we just put some light in there with that light spell? Or does that, will that do anything? Maybe. I didn't what if we just collapse don't... the cave? Just be done with it. Just, just, just seal the cave off and we'll just get back and, you know, do some reading. But what if that... I don't... <laughs> <laughs> so living in the mountains I know that sometimes if there's like a collapse then it can cause a lot of um, harm because it, I don't exactly know but there's like a structural issue um, so I don't know what could happen if we were to try to collapse this I could like it, use the immovable rod to keep it held up but then it wouldn't be collapsed <laughs> well, you know, you don't want to. <laughs> you don't want to clap certain bits. Oh, so your your plan of action is collapse the cave, mm. and then Let's go back off. and have a drink and pretend this is all fine. I mean, if if the cave is sealed, then the problem solved. But if they're rock creatures, wouldn't they just climb out? But it's sealed. Right, but they. <laughs> I mean, I guess I don't know. It seems like they would be able to survive in rock pretty easily if they're made from rock, but maybe not. I mean, it's not necessarily to kill them. It's just to prevent them from killing anyone else. Yeah. I don't know how easy it might be for them to get out. That might make them very angry. <laughs> <laughs> they are completely incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can keep that as a possibility. How would we collapse it? Well, if they're going to glide and rust. Uh... <laughs> Haiku pulls out like 10 sticks of TNT. <laughs> <laughs> well, Saving this. Well, I uh, just sort of pull out a, a scroll, which is the, the, the scroll of transmute rock. Uh, and. Uh, I would have probably told you about if the, the cannons now explode quite violently if I command them to. So, oh. Yeah. I've got two new tricks. <laughs> 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 Will it take time to set that up? Or can you just do it if there's an emergency? I'll, I'll be honest, I haven't done this before. Oh, good. Okay. Good. I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, maybe. I don't know. What does it, everybody else think? It would take a bit of time. <laughs> yeah, we'd have to move away, obviously. I, I think it's a solid plan C. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it was. <laughs> it's not even a B. <laughs> a plan F. <laughs> <laughs> Is that plan? Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's plan, like, we're running out of the cave with a load of, a load of crap chasing us. Throwing exploding <laughs> cannons behind C. as we go. <laughs> that's funny. Should have called it plan T in T. <laughs> oh. <laughs> just, just an idea, just in case, you know. Okay. I, it's good to have up our sleeve, but, like, there might be something really interesting down here. Yeah. Might be some That's like true. story. Might be some cool shit. That's true. If people are forgetting what it's even about, I do kind of want to have the opportunity to find whatever might be lost or be be a mechanism down there. Being lost, I'm kind of over buttons. I'm kind of over buttons. There were a lot of buttons in the last adventure. <laughs> They're always like, no buttons are good buttons. I'm not going to wear them on my clothes anymore. <laughs> so I guess um, 
Randall, you'll have to kind of make sure that we don't die in the darkness, like slip and fall or something, because we aren't going to be able to see in there, I don't think. Okay, well, so it's like that the whole way, though. Um, we get attacked. Can we, can we try the light thing? Yeah. I'm going to feel around on the ground for like a little pebble. Sure. Cast light on it. Toss What's, it into the darkness. Uh, Light's a level one spell, is it? It's a cantrip. It's a cantrip. It? Mm -hmm. Okay. You toss it into the darkness, and sure enough, the pebble goes in there, and nothing happens. Yeah. I'm uh, kind of down for exploding the cave now. <laughs> 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 well, it might end. It might. I, I don't remember exactly. I, I didn't learn that spell. I just know that I could have. And I'm sure that just like with all other magic, there's probably an endpoint. Like there's an endpoint on this side. I could I could go and look ahead. But you won't could, know when I, it ends because you can't tell. But I can see if there's anything in here. Like yeah, but if it you might give, just end just down there. Yeah, but you might carry on walking forever and then you get fucked in the over and then we've got to come and save you and it's pitch black. Yeah, but I but I can run really fast, it's fine. You, but you'll, what if you fast. run really fast into a, something that we can't get to? Can and you see it, the pebble with the light on it? Can, can I see the pebble with the light on it? I assume so. You can see the a, a pebble got thrown in there. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I can see the pebble. I, I don't can't tell if it's got what if it's lit or not. Wait. So how <laughs> this plus, this this vision that we've given Randall is somehow immune to lighting effects? Well, I was gonna okay. say. <laughs> right, well, maybe I can see this lit then. I was gonna say, I, was say, I think you would know. Like, if all right, camera. Can well, we... not necessarily. It depends. It depends if it's like real vision or whether it's like. I think. I think if we hobble you with the inability to see like right. magical light, with you're you're gonna regret that in like yeah, a couple a couple a couple days time, when something important comes up or something. I For think... now, let's not permanently hobble your character with the inability to see different gradients of light. <laughs> I think it was like um, tr true sight or dark, it's dark vision to 120 feet and blind sight within 10 feet. So if the pebble were within 10 feet, I could see how it would just be well, like, let's have rocks a look. around you or whatever. But what, what, what was the precise wording of the item that we gave you? Randley Randall. Uh, I will Vantage. Yeah, yeah. Haiku, what's that? Uh, just, I mean, if people be willing to wait i could replicate uh some sending stones so we could at least keep contact <gasps> that is something i've had since we started playing i haven't used it <gasps> that sounds like a really good idea hmm? it's like a bit of time to produce but like walkie talkies like what, what? <laughs> Is that another circus thing? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like uh, like you'd have two cans and you connect them with a string and you'd be able to talk through one and hear the other one and the walkie talkies. <gasps> Is it magic? No, definitely not magic. No. Cool though. Physics. <laughs> it work. I don't know. Maybe it is magic. You have to uh, describe. Maybe it is magic. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, looks so it looks like it was a blind sight 120 feet. That's yeah, yeah. Says. Oh, blind sight. It doesn't say anything about outpost. Yeah, once attuned, you have but... blind sight up to 120 feet. JK. I assume then normal uh, vision from there out. But... Immune to the blinded condition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would assume that it's it's normal vision after that. Nope, that's not what Adam says. Nope. <laughs> I did wonder. Right. Oh, if you're... oh, okay. So you're just straight up blind after you're all the blind. Feet. All right, all right. Okay. Feet. Yeah, yeah. Blind it's a way to see without your eyes. Yeah, no, that makes sense to me. I'm, I'm, I was on the fence about giving you vision after 120 feet anyway. I'm happy to <laughs> to have to have and Adam push me off that fence. That's what that's what I assumed when I first. Yeah, it, it, it makes it makes complete sense feet, to me. That's yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the drawback of the item. Mm. Yeah, I was trying not to hobble you too much, but I think I don't think after 120 feet it's that bad. Plus, I, I know that you were kind of into the idea of being able to role play that as a as a drawback anyway. But there you go, you got blindsight. 
120 feet. It's far. Mm-hmm. Get on them. I can't see this darkness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't see this darkness. <laughs> Get on them walkie talkie stones. Thank you. How long is it going to take? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, ra- the range of fireball spell is uh, over 120 feet, right? <laughs> <laughs> How long does it take for you to infuse something? You find it. In the book somewhere. In the book. In the oh, book. I should put my countdown music on whilst we're waiting for Jack to do that. No pressure, no pressure. Do you have the physical copy of Tasha's? Yeah. 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 I didn't know you had the physical uh, copy of Tasha's. I, I, I much prefer physical copies. Yeah, no, I'm, I know you're, a, book you're partial. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say, book one? Hipster. hipster. <laughs> book Whenever hipster. you finish a long rest, you have to finish an, a long rest to infuse an item. Uh, you can do it later. It says you just use a normal procedures for attunement. Oh, attune this item later. No, no, you, you infuse oh. the item and then you attune to it. Well, it'll take a long rest then. <laughs> Oh, well, do you have so you have to do it immediately after the long rest? Oh, so you- it takes a long rest to infuse it, and then yeah, you can sure. attune to it. Oh. Do you need to attune to ascending stone? You don't need to. No, no, no. But it still has to take the long rest to make it. Yeah. Um, that can be Plan It'll B. Be I'll, just, I'll just let I'll just go and have a quick peek. It's Plan D. <laughs> <laughs> plan S for sending. Um, uh, it's just... bumped down the collapse in the cave. I yeah. <laughs> down. yeah. Maybe just don't go far enough away that you can't see us anymore. Okay. Yes. Don't go more than 120 feet. <laughs> <laughs> or <Yeah>. one corner. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I want to very cautiously make my way. Pick up the stone and take it with you. Oh, the light stone. Mm hmm. Because okay. then if you walk out the other side, we'll be able to tell if light shows up on the other side. Uh, maybe. If there okay. is another side. I mean, it could go on forever. I don't know. But I, if it... I, I kind of don't want to in case something sees a very bright light coming in through the cave. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine that on the other side of this is just a horde of very angry kobolds or something? And they're just chilling out. And then you just come out of this oh! darkness. And <laughs> This beacon and all these. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's a really good way to announce yourself. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> I just go. I just go have a peek. Can you put the stone maybe, in your maybe pocket? Maybe there'll be some obvious, obvious source. <gasps> yeah, okay. I'll it'll put cover it, in my it pouch. up. It's in my mm-hmm. pouch. There. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then if there aren't okay. any. No. And I'll give you there's... this end of this rope, and I'll keep this end of this rope. Okay. Okay. How how many foot long is your rope? Oh, Usually it's I 120 don't... feet, isn't it? I think oh, it's convenient. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Everything it's in almost D&D. like that's a common measurement. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah, apparently so. <laughs> Pimp and rope. I don't, I don't know. It's whatever the default one in the dungeon is. Sure. Think, so. Okay, it's 50, 50 feet. feet. I thought I, I, I thought it was feet. about 50 feet. Yeah, there you go. Oh, is it? Well, we've got, I don't know. we've got ropes between us, so after 50 feet, we'll tie us to Okay, so are you, are you going down tied to a bunch of rope? Yeah. Or is that plan B? No, it's plan A. Yeah, this is plan right, A okay. right now. Okay, yeah. okay, plan A. You go I'm, into I'm the gonna, rope. I'm going to hold it. I'm gonna... <laughs> yeah, down. Okay, Look, you're not tied to it, hold you're holding it. it. Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay. So that I can like tug on it if there's a problem. Sure. Okay. Or, okay. Well, sure for wait, 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 wait. Before you go. We should have a system of <laughs> how many times you a tug something, which punks. is a danger or not danger. <laughs> if you tug once, it should be danger. If you tug twice, then it should be come along. That's a good idea. Okay. Yeah. Tug twice feels like it should be more danger than tug once. Yeah, I feel like if I'm in danger, I might be like yanking it a lot. Okay, so well, desperate. if you're in danger, <laughs> okay, once if it's okay. Then you'll bite out the gutter. <laughs> what? <laughs> I didn't even think of that. <laughs> was it not sexual in any way? <laughs> oh my god! I thought it was the alert. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh no.
<laughs> like to clarify. Okay, so one. One for good. Once is good and twice is bad. Or more than. Or once. more than twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Two plus. Bef before you set off, should we tie it to the <laughs> I was like, fucking let me go. <laughs> Should we try to do removal rod in case you like slip or get pulled off anywhere? Oh yeah, yeah. And then you can't get okay. pulled well, off. Well, then I better tie it to me then, hadn't I? <laughs> <laughs> we'll tie yeah, our should, ropes yeah. together, and you tie one into you, and then we'll put this into the removal rod. But we'll still hold it so that we can feel it if you pull on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Six hours later. Well, before <laughs> this game started, Doc said something to me about how. Um, <laughs> I told you. Never once have any of our games ever got to the point where I've run out of prepared material. <laughs> Everything has always taken much, much longer than I expected. And I'm just happy about it. Like, honestly, <laughs> I'm happy about, I'm happy that Doc said that. I'm happy that it's a fact because <laughs> it means that I've got stuff prepared. But also you guys are just having fun shenanigans, you know? <laughs> I don't care if we're I don't care if we're if we're Doing this quickly or efficiently, you guys fuck about with rope if you want to fuck about with rope. I'm happy. Very, You're happy. We're very, very efficient and cautious. Cautious. Being cautious. Safe. Being very cautious, yes. Yes. In before the darkness is like 20 feet and then that's the end of the curve. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nothing in just it. It. Yes. There's a note. Sorry, we've gone out. <laughs> Come back later. Yeah. Sorry, we've gone out. <laughs> out <laughs> Come marauding again another day. <laughs> okay, right. I've got the rope tied to me. The other end of the cast. rope is tied to the removable rod. Yep. Yes. Got How many feet of rope tug. do you have? You, you you've uh, got four things of rope, so two hundred feet of rope. Two hundred feet. No, I don't. I don't want that much rope. I want Let's do a hundred. Two ropes. Okay. Yeah. Hundred feet of rope. Two ropes. All right. Well, a little bit less because it's been tied off in places. So mm -hmm. you know, ninety-eight, ninety-six okay. feet. Right. Right. I'm gonna set off. I'm gonna be <laughs> quiet. I would like to try and sneak. <laughs> Please roll your stealth check. This is gonna go great. Will a one. Okay. As you <laughs> are, so you're, you're holding. You're, you're in perfect darkness. I think you're okay in your stealth. Yeah, you get advantage if you're in perfect darkness. Roll again. Mm -hmm. Feel free. Yeah. Okay. That's <laughs> yeah, so you're holding onto this rope, which is also around you and attached to an immovable rod that is, I assume, just hanging in the air. Mm -hmm. Just stuck to the cave. You, well, that, that's the beauty of the immovable rod, my friend. You don't have to attach it to anything. <laughs> you just click it, and it'll stay fixed on that place. Yeah, it looks more stable if it's attached to something. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's all right. It's a psychological thing. Psycholo sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you're lowering yourself into this cave, or or carefully <laughs> taking your time as you go through this, very cautiously down the mouth of this cave. Down this dangerous terrain. Uh, so as I was saying, it, it, I mean, it is dangerous ter terrain or difficult terrain. Um, which is why you're doing perfectly fine, considering you are holding your uh, your attuned walking stick quarterstaff. And the tunnel, sure enough, does or the, the cave, sure enough, does kind of come to like a funneled end at the tunnel. You can see that the the incline of the cave itself kind of kinks out and levels out a little bit into what looks like a small path. Um, as you kind of lower yourself to slowly get a little bit closer towards it, you can see that the um the the kind of the dampness of all of the water and stuff that has been dribbling down to the, the depths of this yeah as a weird choice of words uh, has kind of pulled a little bit and it's got really muddy at the bottom um but you can you, you in front of you is you know th this this incline is coming to a to a to a hot to an end there are, okay. are some muddy puddles at the bottom uh, and a, a the entrance of what looks like a possibly a, a you know a, a humanoid height and dimensioned hallway, but you're not I quite le you're not you're not level with it yet. Okay, am I at the end of my rope? No, you've gone. Um, you think about eighty feet. Okay, all right. I'm, I'm going a little bit. A little bit further then. I'll try and get looked out like all the way down the corridor thing. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I mean, about ten feet away from you is the is the is the kink at which point the the incline ends and mm. the leveling out of the yeah. corridor begins. Once you arrive there, it's just it's this bunch of 
puddles in front of you and and a, and a, and a pathway. Um, and you can see just about down this pathway, but only at a level, like you're not quite level to see the full entirety of it, but you can see the beginnings of what looks like a stone door that is at least somewhat ajar. Spooky. The pathway that you, as far as you're aware, is about 100 meters long. Uh, sorry, 100 feet long. Let's go just keep to consistent measuring. <laughs> 100 feet long, very different. Um, at the end, like, so what you, you know, you're, you're about, so it's about 100 feet down the incline from where you were. Mm. And then it kinks out and it's another 100 feet into the, uh, to, to the end of this pathway. Okay. Um, and I can't see, I can see the doors ajar, but I can't, there's nothing like no obvious figures. You're, you're, yeah, you're, yeah, you need to, you probably need to be a little bit closer to give, or you can, you can get a little bit closer and give me a perception check if you like. Uh, yeah, I'll do that. Just like get to the end of my tether. Yeah. <laughs> and then perceive. So as you, kind of get closer and closer and you get to the end of your tether, you step in one of the puddles of mud at the bottom and you find yourself <sighs> sighing deeply as your foot is Very solidly radical. stuck oh. in the ground. Excellent. Uh... Randall does not panic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> I want to turn like <laughs> I want to turn slightly away from the door. I uh, want to take the pebble out. Yep. Like the lit rock. Uh -huh. And I want to see if I can see any like um, reflections like on the puddle <laughs> or <laughs> you're the bottom of this cave you're stuck there you've got a length of a hundred odd rope attached to you and an immovable rod at the other end yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they're st stuck between an immovable rod and a stuck foot yeah <laughs> so you want to take the, the the light rock out yeah but I, I want to like shield it so it's not like super bright. I just want a sure. little bit of light to see if I can see like reflections off the puddles. And if I can't see reflections, like if I really look, can I see that like the light is reflecting off stuff on one side and not on another, like further in. So in the you stuff. you get the rock out of your pocket, sure enough, and to you it just looks like a rock. Oh. Okay. Well, that's not helpful. I put the rock away. <laughs> Can I try and pull my foot out? Give it a shot, yeah. Do you want to give me a strength that check? Strength, strength check. Randall's foot comes off. Oh. It's stuck fast. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're not panicking. We're not panicking. Randall tugs the rope ten times, at least. <laughs> 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 how, Wait, how how far is the rope stretched now? Like, is it taut? It's, I think it's like full distance now. Could you tug a taut rope? You can yes. go back it's a not... little bit and pull it. Yeah, I can leave. We pulled like, the fucking rope. rope. <laughs> we can then use the rope as a guide to lead us right to him mm -hmm. through the darkness. I'm stuck. Help. <laughs> I'm stuck. <laughs> The stealth, the stealth fails. <laughs> I start heading into the darkness. Okay, are you holding onto the rope? Uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. All you have, imagine now, you've you've covered your eyes, if you will. You are holding onto some rope with both your hands. In front of you is just a slope, a slippery, wet stone <laughs> slope. The rope it's itself really is pretty tote. Is pretty tote tight. It's taut. <laughs> it's taut, but there is some give because the other end is Randall. But you're finding mostly it seems to be okay. Randall, could you give me a strength save, please, just to see Randall how? Have as much or a strength, a strength check. Strength check. Oh, you're doing grand. So you're, you're 
you're, you're able to keep the rope taut so they can well, i've got can... a good foot braced for it yeah you got an excellent <laughs> position braced for it, yeah, solid anchoring uh-huh and surely enough uh eventually again you imagine now that you're you're plodding down a cave holding on to just a piece of rope and trying desperately not to slip and the paranoia that comes with that being Nurali, who just almost fell over. <laughs> it's extra on edge. Well, falling doesn't necessarily scare me because I can fly, but I also uh, don't want to be in trouble with Haiku. I don't want him to be annoyed with me. So really, I'm more worried that Haiku's <laughs> going to be annoyed with me if I fall than if I actually slip because I can probably save myself. Okay. <laughs> but honestly, be, like one of my friends being annoyed with me is probably a bigger worry than whatever I might fall into anyway. So. Okay. All right. Sure. Well, I mean, I'm not going to make you do an dexterity save because you've got a piece of rope and you're on edge enough to be take, being careful. Um, surely enough, after a little bit of while, you're kind of listening out for Randall. Randall, are you calling for them so they know that you're okay? Stop. <laughs> help. 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 The quietest help. <laughs> all right well surely enough eventually you do arrive at randall's anyone else coming down the rope or is it just nearly for now i don't i don't know what's the good idea here what's I... nuggets blind sight that's gotta be pretty far right Ooh, a bet. uh good question mm. that's a great question 60 feet it's not as good, but pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Uh, okay, well, I guess I'll well, say this to Haiku. You, shall I go with Nugget? Because Nugget can see a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, can, uh, I can come if you really want. <laughs> uh... oh, I love this idea that you guys all get down to the bottom and then Haiku just gets in his shell, gets in their shell, and just skates down, and knocks you all down like a bowling ball. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! I think it's stuck in the mud at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Can I purposely slip to cause that to happen? No, no I'm not going to stop you. I'm not going to stop you. Hey, Evan. Hi, Evan. Hi, Evan. Um, I want to talk to Nugget. Okay. Yeah. Nugget, you can. Oh, we can have a bio break, yeah, yeah. Oh, you want a bio break? Yeah, we can bio break. Okay, yeah. thank you. Sorry, I was like, <laughs> I can't wait to be more. We've, well, we've we've we we went past the one hour and a half mark, and I I meant to mm -hmm. call a a bio break, but I got so just enamored with what was happening on screen. Bio <laughs> break fair. time. Mm -hmm. Bio break time. If you guys are new to the stream, our bio breaks last as long as it takes, which is usually uh, five minutes or so, and less than that probably. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we'll be back. We'll be back shortly. Uh, we don't have a, a fancy video reel or anything else playing, but we'll not be gone long. No. Stretch, get a drink. Now's the time. Have a have a look at this little uh, this little drawing over here. Look at this. Get rid of it so people can see the real drawing underneath. Real drawing. <laughs> <gasps> oh, need to oh, move it slightly. Let's cut off a little bit. There we go. Someone want to buy me a new camera? <laughs> <laughs> this is so bad. This is so difficult. There we go. There, we there go. you go. You're good, everyone. All right. All right. Back shortly, Shams. We'll be right back.
she has that drawing looking kind of sus. It's a, it's a penis. That's why. It's a penis. Not wrong with that. <laughs> Evan, I was so incredibly confused by that video to begin with. Like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh. Nice looking, uh, nice looking tea. Oh, bloody nice. Bangers of mashing of giant yorks you put in. Bloody lovely. I'm not too much of a fan of gravy, to be honest. I mean, I won't say I don't dislike it, but I wouldn't actively have it. Yep, yeah, here come the controversial food opinions. <laughs> Yorkshire puddings are either soggy or crusty. Pass. That's not what they're meant to be, though. That's the essence of a Yorkshire pudding. Hi, uh, poor, poor Jack's Hello. been left here on his own for ages. I have. I've, I've, I've uh, somehow gone into food conversation. By somehow, I mean I brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh. the do good penis is still there. <laughs> the Baronade, thank you so much for the raid. Oh, perfect timing. <laughs> <laughs> thank Someone you. Someone actually rubbed it out and redrew it when you were gone. I don't know who. Some random oh, hand. What the, what the fuck? Yeah, very odd. Hi, Raiders. Hi, I hope you had a good stream. <laughs> we're just uh, having a quick be right back bio break, but we're half back. We're, we're yeah, we're mostly back now. Ooh! <laughs> poor old camera. High angle. Top. Poor old camera. <laughs> High angle. High <laughs> angle. Dear me. This is uh, that's probably fine. Uh. Ooh. Bit too Careful, much sofa don't show right. them this. <laughs> show the sofa off. You're not allowed to see the sofa. Is still on the sofa. Oh, you'll see the coat. You'll not see the, the companion cube. Oh, not the companion cube. Docs has put Vasily on his lens. I don't know where. <laughs> <laughs> what happened with the gargoyles? We're currently in the the cave, um, where the gargoyles apparently are, but. Is all we've trapped all in we've found so far is shenanigans. <laughs> You'll That's only eat Yorkshire puds without gravy. <laughs> oh my god! Crazy dog. There's that's, a darkness that's a, within that's you. That's a perfectly cromulent way of eating Yorkshire puddings. All right. I mean, I'm not saying it's a bad way. I'm just saying only. Oh, only. I missed the only bit. <laughs> yeah, it's wrong. Trust me, I know. <laughs> Filling them up to the brim is fun. Mm. And they're like a little little cup. I don't think I've ever filled mine up to the brim. You've not lived. What do you I do with the excess? Oh, never mind. I, guess it just, I, just, I mean, it just goes onto the plate, doesn't it, really? Yeah. In my mind, I, mean, I was just missed. like, I'm just like, you just, I've never had too much. I mean, I love I love a lot of gravy, but I guess my Yorkshire puddings have just never been to that that degree of fullness. I just in my, in my mind, I just imagined because I often eat Yorkshire puddings by picking them up. In my mind, I imagined you picking up an entire fill to the brim worth of <laughs> gravy oh, yeah, you Yorkshire just, you pudding just and just like being a, like, like, yeah, like, yeah, I was expecting yeah, that. Yeah, I just, you, yeah. you bite a little notch into it. Oh, if you can drink it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> or if you if you really fancy oh. you you. Uh, Get your Yorkshire puddings to rise in the shape of a teapot. Except <laughs> 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 replace the gravy with something else. What? What else? 
Well, like it would toad as a whole, I prefer beans over gravy. Toad and whole and beans is good. It's good. What? <laughs> Crazy. I don't like beans, so I can't have it. Well, yeah, but I don't <laughs> like Evan, beans. The stunned silence. <laughs> 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 Oh, I suppose Tom doesn't like sausages because they're too phallic. <laughs> yep. I'm too straight for sausages. That's the issue. <laughs> you need to move your cam a little bit down top. I mean, no. Surely, surely Toad in the Hole is quite... No, oh, what's going on? <laughs> what, Jack? What are you going to say? I'm not on there. Your... No, you've got our attention now. You've got what's our attention? about Toad in the Hole? I'm not giving sexualities to food. It's not going to happen. <laughs> It sounds like you already have. Saying but... toad in the hole is straight. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about like, the phallicness of sausage. <laughs> You've got. <laughs> Shush. Uh... Tom is apparently not Yorkshire enough. I mean, no, I'm not even remotely. I've been. Have I ever been to Yorkshire? <laughs> oh, I keep trying to get you to come. <laughs> Listen, if you get Jenny to drive, he's all with. Hey, good luck with Someone that. Someone say worst. <laughs> mm -hmm. Think about sausages. I can offer myself, Hazel, and my dog. So that's, that's all you oh, get. What a, that's a that's a smorgasbord of. I would goodies. offer Hazel's dog, but that's probably something for him to decide. <laughs> that's very kind of you. It's more uh, genius. What the 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 kettle was that the the kettle bit? The genius Jack? Yeah. The kettle thing. I don't know why you're confused by that. <laughs> with a divided chat <laughs> with a food think? opinion. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You posted frog. You will gain subscriber. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe it. I had this on my, on my thing, but the, the, the washi tape is getting old. It will not stay. We, so for, for Halloween, because our 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 D and D streams are always Sundays, and Halloween just happens to land on a Sunday this year. We're gonna try and do budget cosplays of our characters, but what do I do? What do what do what what does the DM cosplay as? Do I just come in and as a as a classically edgy DM boy with like a big hood? I was thinking my 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 backup plan if I can't if I can't pull off anything better is going to be I turn off all the lights, fill the room with candles, have a big hoodie, you know, maybe get some like eyeliner, just mascara stuff, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> be as edgy as possible. What's the largest letter you think you could make? And just just have the letters DM on you. Giant <laughs> DM. I, I want to. I want to see if you can make a D twenty out of cardboard, and then just like I'll just wear a D twenty six. You're trying to scroll down on your notes. Yeah. <laughs> you get to roll you <laughs> then. Yeah. <laughs> you could be an NPC. You could be hmm. parsnip. I could be parsnip. The be the parsnip. the dog. I mean, mm. we were thinking about doing Nugget, our wonderful bat companion. But uh, banana on the nose. But it's difficult because nuggets. What's the what's the species? Honduran white bat. Honduran white bat. Mm -hmm. That's a difficult. That's a difficult bat to cosplay as. Hi, Kajika, the ninth nice kitsune. The How's it going? Oh my God, hooded horse. Oh, the hooded horse thing. That would be sick. That's a good idea, Canuck. Oh, that would be good. Damn. Evan, I've got a cloak on. <laughs> oh. oh, cloaks are cool. I want a cloak. They got Damn it for it. fair that I can't go to because people are dumb. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> That's cool. Okay, anyway, we've returned to our D&D. &D. Let's get back to it. At the end of our pre-bio break session, you said that you wanted to talk to Nugget. Yeah. First, Fully Phase, thanks for the raid. I appreciate Hi, it. Hope you had a good stream. Hope you're doing well. Two um, raids in one day. Wow. I wanted to say to Nugget, Nugget, you st you stand in this bit and like point to where the darkness was. Can you see out? 
Can you see the rest of it? I can go there. I can, yeah. You can see it? Can you not see it? No, I can't see past this little bit here. What's wrong with your eyes? Uh, not as good as your eyes. Why? I don't know. Do you want to borrow my eyes? Uh, <laughs> no. You keep those in your head. What do you want? Okay, what, what we're gonna do? Ran, we're gonna go down. We're gonna follow this road. The... No, no, no! You don't need. I don't need your eyes. But how can I see? What? How can I show you the things I can see? You don't need to show me. We're gonna. Fo I'm gonna follow this rope to get to Randall and Nurley, and you're gonna come with me. That's what that's called, rope. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then we're gonna see what's wrong with Randall because Randall signaled that danger was happening. So you can tell me what's happening, okay? That Randall. There's a scamp. That's a scamp, that Randall is. Okay. That's a scamp. All right, <laughs> I'll be back. No, 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 we're going together. Oh, we're going... Okay. Okay. I was going to say, cause, but you won't be able to see anything, will you? I'm going to come on the rope as well. You can tell me what's going on. What's, the rope? What's, what's, what's in you front of me? my back. Yeah, but we'll go through the with the rope next to us so we don't get lost. Okay. That's right. fine. Okay. But I can see, like I, d I don't need the rope. Yes, yes, but I, 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 I need to, I need to know where the rope is. Okay. Okay, you like the rope. I like the rope. Yes. Is it a comfort rope? Thing? It's a comfort rope. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, Plus okay. That makes sense. <laughs> I, <like it. laughs> I get. It. It's, it's your favorite rope, of course. It's your favorite rope. I get it. Let's not I get... look too deeply into the concept of emotional support rope. <laughs> <laughs> Just like to, can we highlight the intelligence score that uh, Nugget has? Um, it is minus four. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, great. Oh, great. Oh, very You're different two, education. Two minus four. <laughs> He's a bat. Okay. All right. All right. So sure enough, accompanying Haiku, you down the uh, the bottom. Haiku, of the rope. me and Nugget are going down the rope. Okay. Yeah. I'll tug if yeah. I, if we need you, right? Well, one... One is good, and come along. Multiple is bad. Stay here. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I feel like the ro the tugging system has fallen apart here, our... How is it falling apart? <laughs> well, you just said all tugs mean come. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> strike, strike that from the record. I, I did that one out. Reverse, uh, reverse. Where's the neuralizer? <laughs> Neuro, neuralizer, quick. It's not on this overlay. Fuck, oh well. No. Uh, one is everything's fine. Come along. Two okay. or more is bad. Panic. We need help. It's just, okay, difference in speed. Gotcha. Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Ara's going. <laughs> <laughs> okay! <laughs> Down there. Nug Nugget is uh, crawling, well, walking alongside you. Uh, at, you know, Nugget speed. So, very slowly. Mm -hmm. uh, That's but fine. surely enough, you do find your way to the bottom of this incline, where you bump into Nurali, who has also just arrived. <laughs> Oh, my foot stuck. That the end of the rope. Don't step in the puddles. Don't. You get you what you when you get to, when you get to the bottom, uh, Randall. What you see is your friends are just slowly descending down this 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 rope. You've been holding it steady for them, and you've just basically been going like, ah, "I'm stuck." Wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, it's actually what it is. It's like a scene out of you know where like night vision comes on, and you're like watching people in a dark space, and mm -hmm. they can't see each other because it's pitch black. So you're just seeing. Nurley and Oro <laughs> looking around like this, like not looking at you because they can't see. They're just listening intently, and it's you're just there, like. Da -da. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd be intently watching out for like them about to get close to one of these puddles to be like, mm -hmm. "Don't stop! Don't no! It's a, like a a puddle or something. I don't know. If you step in it, it sticks you. Real good. Oh shit! Are you completely stuck? Well, I, I tried to pull my foot out and it, it, it wouldn't come out. So I panicked. Hmm, shit. Uh, That's fair. Okay. 
You might be able to help me, like, pull out, I don't know. Nugget, Nugget, you're, you're way stronger than I am. <laughs> I can try. Pull Randall's foot that's stuck in the, in the thing. In what? In the mud. I'm stuck in the mud? Yeah. Randall, point to, point to your foot that needs pulling. I can't point see shit. To my foot. Well, the uh, the 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 clear bat strength that is in their teeth probably. So nugget. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> face down by your their leg and just tries to very gently tug. And manages to do so without actually you know harming you anyway. What's their strength roll? Do you want to give me a strength roll from the character sheet? Seventeen. Okay. There is a significant shift in the mud that is underneath you. And as you uh, feel the shift, you do manage to, you feel like there's like a, a, a relax, relaxation of tension underneath you. Your, your foot does become unstuck, but not all the way. As it becomes unstuck, it feels almost like, uh, you know, there's definitely a little bit more wiggle room for you to get out. It's deep mud now. Uh, and it's clearly not just normal mud. Uh, but as you get kind of jostled about and the movement of the mud starts to kind of get very loud and squishy. Um, you hear uh, a, a crumbling sound as a small piece of rock debris lands next to you. Uh, alongside it, there is a, a screeching sound as something comes plummeting towards you from the ceiling. Um, oh, I didn't realise the ceiling was that far away. Well, I mean, plummeting is just uh, the speed at which it's coming. It's, uh, it's not that far away no. from you. Uh, it is dropping. Can you give me your, your armor classes? Like 17, isn't it? F 15, because uh, I haven't done anything. Uh, <laughs> bubbles for a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So a uh, what you originally saw as a uh, static tight has dislodged itself from the ceiling and oh. has dropped directly onto your head. Uh, it has done so hoping to pierce you with itself. The creature that has dropped off the ceiling looks like a stalactite in every sense of the word, uh, and it has landed and just, like, it tried desperately to get kind of like in your neck region here, but instead of just cut you down the chest and landed on the floor in front of you. Excellent. Um, it has cut you deeply as it has done so. Doing uh, da, 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 da. well, the first cut is the deepest. I rolled the wrong thing. <laughs> Ten points of damage as the piercer falls to the ground, screeching, desperately trying to to soak up the blood that it's taken with it. Is that ten points? You say? Yep. Hi, Grace. Ow. Ow! 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 Something fell on me, like a, like a, like one of the static tights in the ceiling. It 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 tried to kill me. Oh! <laughs> what the fuck is that? This <laughs> is like this. The static tight is now like it appears to have made like some kind of worm form, and it's like starting to slowly crawl its way over to you and just tries Come to on. like. It's got four huge, uh, kind of like these different, Pinter. all the different cardinal directions, pincers, but it just tries itself to, it, lo it looks like it's going to try and bury itself in your leg. Uh, I'm going to hit it with my stick before I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, feel free to make an attack. Hit it with my stick. <laughs> with my stick. Uh, you successfully <laughs> just, no back. <laughs> you managed to whack it uh, with your walking stick quarter staff, doing some damage. It's it writhes on the floor. <laughs> God, why well, can I hit it again? I'm just going to keep hitting it until it stops making noises. Okay. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna give it a, ch a chance to attack you again. Uh, it misses, but you can see that it throws its body at you, and the pincers like barely graze like the outside of your clothing as it kind of just swipes past you, and a small indent is made. It kind of like looks like it's tried its desperate 
uh, in a desperate bid to embed itself in your leg. Uh, you can see it's got this big, gross eye that's just kind of staring at you the entire time. Uh, it looks as if it's realized that it's not going to have any luck here. And as it makes its flail attempt to try and get you, it just starts to slowly crawl towards the wall. It's got small little feet that kind of appear to wriggle upon. What do the feet look like? They look like small, uh, almost, almost mandibles. They're like little bug feet. Oh, I want them to look like adult, like human feet. <laughs> but like smaller. Little shoes on. <laughs> like the caterpillars from Mario that yeah. have like the little hats yeah, exactly. and the, like yeah, mini yeah. feet with shoes on them. They have little wellies on. <laughs> <laughs> What's a welly? Um, if I can so like a Wellington to boot. It, crawls it's like a rain shoe, yeah. Sorry, you, want what, you, want, you want to hit it? I'm going to keep hitting it if I can reach. Okay. That thing yeah, I mean, it, it, it can't get very probably. far. Uh, and you can just about reach it. Uh, roll on the attack. Uh, you successfully beat the life out of this. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I'm glad none of you could see that. Is it dead? I, well, it's not moving anymore. So I think I think I got it. Okay. Well, I, I can't like hear more. it anymore. That's a good sign. Is there any more of them? Can you see any more? Uh, well, I mean, it looked like a static type before, and I think the cave is full of them. I assume there's loads of them. That's comforting. Uh, so the ceiling's alive. <laughs> At least some of the ceiling. Maybe it's only down here in this corridor bit with like the sticky mud, but the sticky mud. Uh, yeah, well, that's what my foot's stuck in. It's like really, really sticky mud, and I can't. Like, no, it helped a lot, but my foot's still sort of a bit stuck. Oh, do you need, do you need more help? Why? Well, yeah, probably. I'll try and like pull my foot out. I want to pull and in this moment, Haiku arrives. <laughs> <laughs> So you get to the, you get to the, I mean, you kind of bump into uh, yeah. Oro at this point, uh, which is, you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, not a super comfortable experience for anybody because Oro is much smaller than uh, Haiku, uh, but you, uh, you know, eventually come to a halt and you can, you could, as you were quite, as you were inching your way down this cave, hear the screeching of whatever horrible beast that was. Uh, you can only assume was a, a some kind of massive, just colossal being of of great power. Uh, yeah, like quite the fight. Yeah, that Randall just dispatched with ease. Mm -hmm. So what, what's what's happened? What's going on? You tugged. <laughs> oh, my, the my ceiling's foot's... alive. And my foot stuck. Your foot stuck in what? Oh, there's like mud down here that my foot got stuck in when I tried to look at the ajar door that's down the end of the corridor. The big stone door that's slightly open. There's a door? Oh yeah, I probably forgot to mention that bit. There's a big <laughs> stone door at the end. I was trying to have a closer look at it. But I stepped in this puddle that's right here that I'm like Randall is just pointing, but obviously nobody can see. <laughs> if I hand you my quarter staff, can you put it under your foot so we can try to like push help like lever it out i think if you just like if nugget just like pulls me it might be enough if i push as well can we have another nugget strength check with guidance. advantage and guidance wow. oh. yeah, what are you gonna say to nugget oh one more time nugget from the top <laughs> <laughs> that's a d4 i meant the I can't guidance. see but i can flail Whoa. until i feel nugget and <laughs> guidance okay Okay, all right. Well, with a grand total of 19, Nugget manages to gently, with its mouth, <laughs> pull you out from the mud. Uh, you are now, I mean, you have to wobble yourself secure, but you are, mm -hmm. with the rope, now on this side of the mud with the limp carcass of the wriggly piercer next to you. Okay. Uh, that I did it. I'm free. Okay. Um, but can I? Is this like whole corridor? Does it look muddy like all the way down it? From what I can see, the corridor's not muddy at all. It's just this okay. the, the the bottom of this cave 
um, okay. that just like, appears just like to the just transition be, it's bit. pulled. Yeah, it's like pulled okay. at the bottom of this cave, uh, uh, apparently gotcha. conveniently underneath where these or this this piercer was. Mm-hmm. Okay, and you disrupt its rest whilst you uh, so were the, being tugged out by Nugget. The, the corridor looks okay. I think it, there's just like a bit here that looks like bad mud. Okay. Um, so you if are? we can maybe step over it, yeah, and then yeah. hopefully not get pierced by a falling thing. Yeah, that'd be great. How wide is it? So the, so the bottom of this of this uh, cave down here is probably. Uh, probably still about 20 foot wide in a radius. Um, the height of this cave is about 30 foot from where you are currently, but there's a very, very steep um, kind of drop as the top of like the, the ceiling, and then there's like a wall almost just in front of you uh, that is very kind of, um, the gradient is very steep. So it's like a wall, but it's just really the end of the cave that is all funneled down to a point um, where this this small hallway is. Okay, so I, I think if we can step over the muddy bit here, we'll be all right. And then... Okay. Can Just you... to clarify, the muddy bit is 20 feet wide? Yep. Okay. What, I mean, but between where you... No, sorry. <laughs> it's wide, 20 foot wide. From oh. where you are to like the length of like it's it's, it's like you know five foot jump from where you are I see, into I see. the hallway okay i apologize from so in front of you there is a five foot step from here to the hallway and then in front of you width wise there is this you know 20 foot radius uh end okay. of the cave and it's uh, spread out along the bottom uh is this is this uh, five by 20 I got spread know. mud. I apologize. Okay. My my description there wasn't very clear. I guess we could try that. You'll have to tell us when to jump because we can't see. Okay. <laughs> I, I... Also, very... should we leave the rope here so we can climb back up more easily? Pro- probably, yeah. Yeah, probably good. It's still attached to the rod. Mm. Hi, Yumizu. Hello. I assume you uh, you joined the raid. How's it going? What about what about if I if I go over first and then I can hold out my my walking staff for you and then you can like hold on to that as you jump (laughs) so you know where to go. Can we do a standing jump of five feet? How 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 does a standing jump work? That is a great question. Yeah, it's like uh, it's like a strength modifier, right? Yeah, it's like just your strength or something, isn't it? Not your strength modifier. Because I think a non-standing jump is like something about speed and it's like ten plus something. Yeah. Adam was like this jumps. literally earlier today. I saw this earlier today. Um, bum, 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 jumping, standing jump. Are you gonna have? Oh, you've got a high jump and you've got a long jump. Bum, 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 bum. Standing jump. Half your strength score. Start. Half your strength. Yeah. Half your strength score. I can't. Half your strength it. score. Not your. Not your um, modifier. Yep. I still can't make a five foot jump. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Is the area big enough for Nugget to fly? We've uh, we just so there's some there's some blind sight discourse in the chat. Don't worry, we're all a little bit confused about this so far. <laughs> uh, we're going with uh, you're able to. I mean, especially because this is magical blind sight, not just your vision, your ability to perceive within uh, a small area around you. This is magical blind sight that is afforded yeah. to Randall by the um, by the the bandage that Randall can essentially see through darkness without you know, any, any uh, issue up to 120 feet, including color, et cetera. Um, but after 120 feet, it's nothing. You can't see shit. Mm-hmm. Imagine, imagine a life like that. Rough. 
Uh, so blah, 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 blah. standing jump with 10 foot running start is your strength score. Uh, otherwise, it's half. Okay. I would like to use Nugget. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, nugget would uh, probably struggle to fly someone into a. No, I, I mean, fuck it. Let's just do it. Why not? Uh, in my mind, I'm like trying to imagine a giant bat flying people into a small corridor uh, through a small gap. But really, I'd, I'm quite happy with us just using that as a way to... Somehow, Nugget manages to get each of you across this small gap because <laughs> it's a five-foot jump. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but you know what? You're on a slope as well. Maybe Neroli just takes a couple of steps backwards and then uses the momentum of the fall to make it across this five-foot muddy gap. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, fine. either way, you guys managed to get across it. The important thing is that we have realized that that mud is dangerous. <laughs> yes. And that the entry of this cave, perhaps, is also dangerous because of maybe more pierces. You've got into this pathway, and at the end of it, you can see that there is a stone door that is ajar. When I describe it as ajar, I don't want you to imagine it as a push or a pull door. It is a sliding door that is somewhat open. Okay. It has can maybe- Can we see or just Randall? Just Randall can see. Okay. I know that. Uh, I, I, can I look along the walls of the cave? Is it mm. reasonably smooth? Like the corridor, but is it reasonably smooth all the way down? It is perfectly smooth. It is. Okay. It, this it looks man-made to you. Okay. Uh, but like, if you like the, the wall... Found the, a the... meat jar in a field. <laughs> it was just a mason jar full of meat in the forest. Uh, my sound fuck? didn't work that time. <laughs> the worst geocache, worst geocache ever. ever. My favorite part about that is that I, in the audio recording, I laugh at the same time as I laugh in real life in response <laughs> to the geocache <laughs> sound bite. Every time, every time we start talking about you finding a meat to shine in a field, <laughs> I, I laugh, and then it, the audio clip has me laughing at the exact same time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I do that okay. in the highlights as well. I always <laughs> laugh at the same point. So yes, yes. <laughs> I, so I made a. Was, we've been playing a little bit of Battlefield over the weekend, and I made a clip of some of the clips that I've I've got put together, and uh, I rewatched it, and I like multiple times I was replaying, and I was laughing at the same time that I, I was laughing in the clip, and I was like, "This is embarrassing." <laughs> I find myself so funny. <laughs> <laughs> the worst is when I hear someone say something, and I think of a joke, and then I say that joke in the recording. <laughs> <laughs> you hey. quite predictable, huh? <laughs> you know what? That just means you're both consistent. True. Yeah. True. Consistency. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Um, so you want to do what? Oh, uh, I'm gonna advise everyone. Be like, the walls are like smooth and it looks pretty safe. So like, you if you go to a wall, you can like follow it along to the end. The wall's okay. not gonna bite me. I, it doesn't look like it. Do okay. I? Do we need to be sneaky? Uh, well, I mean, I just screamed a lot, but maybe. <laughs> Do we need to reactivate the sneak? <laughs> and make us sneaky. Or help. Should I do it? Yeah, let's do it. Pass without trace. Sneaky okay, pass without trace. Would you like to describe to us just, just briefly what it entails for you to cast pass without a trace like do you just like find some mud and like <laughs> put it on someone's forehead like what does it look like <laughs> i like that idea yeah uh, <laughs> not uh, camouflage. yeah not not the danger mud <laughs> just the mud from the walls strap yeah. it like under under the under everyone's eyes like oh, like army <laughs> thing okay, just cool. like feel around for where people's faces are and i'm just like <laughs> It's got like loads of little handprints all over them. Yeah, little combo <laughs> handprints everywhere. Okay, oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> Next one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, it does say for the duration, each creature you choose within 30 feet of you, including you, has benefits. It doesn't say that you need to be able to see them. So that's fine with me. Uh, <laughs> I like that. Okay. So you want to guys want to use your, your bonus on your stealth checks if you'd like to make a stealth check. You get plus 10 thanks to the spell that Oro has just cast. Heck yeah. High jump is three plus strength modifier with 10 foot or half as much if you're attending a standing high jump. Oh, Adam made a mistake. 
Oh, buddy. I respect you for rectifying your mistake. I'm disappointed <laughs> that you made a mistake. But I'll, I'll... <laughs> oh man, what an allegory for life. <laughs> I'm really disappointed in you for making a mistake. <laughs> Everyone ever. Sorry. Listen, Continue. if you if you perceive someone to be a flawless <laughs> being who never makes any D and D rule mistakes, and then they make a mistake, then what's real? Honestly, where does it end? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway. So we have 18, 12. Oh, sorry. This is with the plus 10s. So the lowest score we have is 13. Wait, does Nugget get an advantage roll? Or is that yeah, it was just auto on advantage, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, technically, you're all in darkness at the moment, so you get advantage regardless. Um, oh. I'd like to roll your advantages for your pitch blackness. Hey! Hey! Let's go. Oh, <laughs> Jack, slight slight <laughs> It's oh. difficult to be stealthy when you're clanking around with all the stuff on your back. Yeah. yeah. Very difficult to be tanky. So, on brand. <laughs> weirdly, uncharacteristic silence from uh, Haiku and the rest of you as you, <laughs> as you <laughs> manage to make your way down through this cave. Um, at a certain point, maybe 10 foot away from the door, you are all able to see. The darkness is lifted and you are able to to see in front of you again uh, and sure enough as randall described it uh, there is a giant stone door that appears to be very very slightly ajar it looks like it's um maybe one and a half foot slid open on the side from one side to the other um but apart from that this is, this is that's all you that's all you've got on this scene it's too late to talk to your mom's coming down to class right now. <laughs> saying, Listen, I've forgotten more about D and D than most people can remember, so you can chill out. <laughs> oh my god, did Adam say that? I'm. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> uh, the best part is he's right. He's absolutely yep, right. The man's right. encyclopedic. He's got absurd knowledge. <laughs> we're just we're just messing with you because you because it's easy to punch up, Adam. It's easy to punch <laughs> up. <laughs> Adam just on the other end of a TV screen going, What you all know about D D could fit into the palm of my hand. <laughs> <laughs> this bodes well for tomorrow's game time. Don't don't worry, Jade. I, I promise you I'm gonna forget plenty of rules. But we're gonna have lots of we're gonna have lots of fun. Uh it's going to be really good. Uh, I'm actually I'm short, short, short little promo here. A little, 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 little promo. Uh, I am running some paid D and D games because um, like, your boy's got to pay some bills, and your boy's got to pay some bills with the streamer, so she doesn't mind me promoing it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so if you if you've got some spare change and you want to play some D and D, feel free to sign up for one of the games. I will be adding some new ones in the coming days. Um, they're all spooky Halloween games, but we make sure that the the games aren't gonna. We're not gonna cross any lines. So if there are any phobias that you've got or anything you don't want to be spooked by, they won't be in the game. Um, but it's gonna be a bit gruesome, a bit gory, uh, but good company. There's one spot currently available for one of the games, um, and then I'm gonna be adding some more in the coming in the coming up the next couple of days. I'll post about it somewhere. I'll post about it somewhere. Uh, I got you to lead into some promo. You did. You did. You did good. Good job, so. Jaded. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, but yeah, no. That's all right. I mean, if you guys can fancy joining one of those games, I'll I'll do my best to spook you a little bit, but not so much that you're uncomfortable. Uh, <laughs> and there are some more comfortably spooked games. <laughs> um, and actually, so the next the next one module I'm going to run, they're all one shots. The next one I'm going to run has a really nice tie into the first one that I'm running this week. So if you're players in this week's games, there could be some continuing conti continu continuity if you fancied. But I mean, you got to see if I'm a good DM first. So we'll see, if, <laughs> we'll see how the games go. <laughs> they might be terrible. Uh, I promise you they won't be. They'll be fun. I've, I've rewritten a good chunk of these uh, one shots because I was like, oh, we can do this better. This can be more fun. There can be more <laughs> RP here. That kind of stuff. Anyway, back to the game. End of the corridor. We have this big stone door. Anyone like to give a peek? Yeah, uh, it's not too late to collapse it. Be easier to collapse it here. Just throw that out there. 
<laughs> I'm gonna, kidding, I'm kidding, gonna kidding, give kidding. it a peek. Same, if that's okay. <laughs> Roll me some stuff if you want to perceive. Some stuff. Um, apart from Haiku, just in case anyone I was thinking the haiku might roll something don't roll anything haiku because uh, you can't see shit oh, we're at the bottom of cave there's no light sources down here bro you got nothing did you turn it on yeah it would have been on okay well yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very much not on during all of the darkness that you've just gone through and then you can pop it back into life at, at the end if you'd like to yeah yeah okay <laughs> I like to imagine it's like. <laughs> it's, oh my God, it's, it's like a, a magical, magical word. It's, it's got a magical, magical word. word. It's got a magical word with a really embarrassing <laughs> phrase, but we forgot what the phrase was. Yeah, we forgot oh. what the phrase uh, was. So it's fine. I'm just going to imagine that it's got a it's button. It's in the gonna... vault somewhere. Someone wants to go back. Oh, yeah, it. it's in the vault somewhere. <laughs> um, but, uh. Do you. I mean, you. I wonder, I wonder perceive. Light. T- turn on. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I like to imagine that you say, uh, and I'm oh. going to say this very, very specifically. You say, "Oh, plus ten, Jesus Christ!" You say, "You say, Siri, turn the lights on." <laughs> oh, it was supposed I cho- to be a dirty joke, and you one. missed an opportunity to say, <laughs> oh. "I'm going to turn you on." Thirty <laughs> <laughs> uh, perception, though. Bloody hell! Yeah. Bloody hell! Plus okay, 10 plus, te- plus ten in it. Plus ten in it. Plus ten in it. Yeah. If you just how it uh, is, just how it is. I want to. I want to take Jenny's badge making thing and make you a badge that just says plus ten in it, um, <laughs> but not plus ten initiative. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, thank you very much, Adam. That's that's very that's very kind. Um, so you get a very good rundown of this particular this this that you know fucking everything about this door. Holy shit. Good God. It's definitely uh, a door. This is, I mean, you know, not a single thing about this corridor looks anything other than man-made. Uh it looks almost too perfectly done. In fact, this was if you you'd imagine this was done by machinery or magic. Um down to the this this door at the end, it looks I mean, in the in the in the scheme of things, when it comes to this, it doesn't look too old. You'd probably guess that maybe um, fifty years, maybe about fifty years, uh, maybe you know a little bit longer than that, um, because it's it's in pretty good nick. Apart from around the seam where this door has been jimmied open, it's very clear that someone has tried to lever it. And whilst you imagine at one point this door was perfectly sealed with a mechanism, because in where you would imagine a key lock would be, there is a small groove that looks like it might fit an amulet or a key of some kind like that. I say amulet because you immediately, being as perceptive as you are, recognize it to be the same exact shape as the talisman that Randall is wearing around his neck. Um, Again, this looks like someone has tried to break (laughs) into this forcibly jimmying open this, levering it in some way, maybe some kind of crowbar action, and broken small bits of the stone door in the process. It doesn't look like it would be impossible for you to improve upon this work and open it all the way because you're just so perceptive. (laughs) You've noticed that a small amount of the stone has wedged itself under the door on the other side. You think you could probably reach your hand in with a bit of work, move it free, and then that would give you more... Uh, more movement in the door you'd be able to push it open from what you can see through the small gap you can see that there is a brick wall maybe 10 feet away from where the door is another it's a brick wall in front of you is just um, a bit of stonework floor Uh, it looks like there might be a couple of barrels in there as well but they are dusted it's old in here Okay, that was a lot of information to process. Uh... <laughs> you, got, you got a 30, you get a lot of stuff. <laughs> Haiku freezes from information over <laughs> so perception. So... The curse of being too knowledgeable. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Fixated on far too many small details. Randall, there's a, uh, there's a hole in that door which looks a lot like your amulet. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, you're so perceptive. <laughs> <laughs> how, did, how did you you saw that like so well? I don't know, especially <laughs> since you're at the front of the. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try and get the door a bit more open. Well, fully open. Uh, so are you going to try and uh, loosen some of the rock that's fallen into the into the back of the door? Yeah. I mean, it takes you a couple of minutes, but even with your, with your strength roll that you had previously, you, you managed to do this bloody quietly, honestly. Um, you kind of definitely move some of the debris that's fallen behind, some of the damage that's been done to this door. And given enough time... And enough force and enough pressure, you're able to, with that, you know, already two feet, one and a half feet worth of um, gap, mm. push onto the door in such a way that it slides not quite, isn't the word, slides isn't the word, it grinds reluctantly out of the way. It looks like, uh, you know, the mechanism that was supposed to keep it open has not been activated. Um, and you suspect. You strongly suspect that it was the amulet that was what was probably the key to opening this. Mm. Um, but you've managed to, without that, shove it to the side. Is there anything more in the room? Oh, there's stuff in the room, my friend. We're going to move you to their map right now. Uh-huh. Um, the most huge <laughs> amount of our, of our game time left. Um, let me just make sure that... Cliffhanger! <laughs> Oh, the token for Randall is currently the wrong way around. Uh, <laughs> uh, I do like an Arcana check once I'm in the room. Or something um, what, like. what would you like to Anything. use your Arcana skill for? So uh, when it comes to using your Arcana skill, really what you want to be doing is using that for like, oh, there's a magical thing. Let me try and discern the, the nature of this. Uh, okay. If you roll me an Arcana check now, uh, I've got, I, I could maybe give you something, but it, usually you want to target a specific thing. Okay, they roll. Wait. Oh my god, these rolls today! <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, um, you. I mean, arriving here. Um, I, you know what? I'm going to give this to you for free. You rolled well today. Um, oh, thanks. I mean, not for free. You rolled well. I mean, you didn't ask about this specifically or roll the right thing, but it's linked to Arcana, so I'll give it to you. Um, <laughs> first off, that darkness back there definitely magical, hundred percent, no doubt about it. That is. Very odd for there to be a magical darkness at the bottom of a cave because a cave is pretty dark as is. Additionally, very strange for this tunnel to have been carved, and that in itself has put you on kind of high alert of good chance there's going to be kind of that. That's a spell. This is a protective kind of environment that we're going through here. We're going through defenses, is what's happening here. And you arrive on the other side of this stone uh, door and you see just a shimmer of something very, very briefly, um, a marking on this, on this stone wall in front of you, which I will, I will show to you when I remove maps, um, that looks a lot like a really good place for a defensive magical ward. It's not that you see the ward, your brain just goes, if I was putting down a magical trap, that's where I would put a magical trap. If I was a game okay. designer, that's where I put a jump scare. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So I'm putting Nugget on this map a little bit far ahead simply because there's not enough space. Uh, and we move you now. What are you trying to say? <laughs> yeah, we'll fuck. <laughs> you guys see everything okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. Can now that we're out of the magical darkness. <laughs> Tadas thought he was going to say, it looks like a really good place for a cliffhanger. It would be. <laughs> uh, so, I'll, so, like, I'll point to roughly where I, I, I briefly saw something. So, it, so it, it wasn't so much that you actually saw anything, just to make this clear. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, no. it, you, you saw something in the same sense that when you're playing a game, and you see like an X on a wall, you're like, no, oh, that's a thing. Mm. I think I'd, I'd, I'd still call it out and just say, sure. Uh, hmm, maybe not even calling it something that looks suspicious. Something feels wrong. 
He's not moving. I I, I want to call something out that isn't obvious, like saying obviously is it's it's a ward or anything, but just sort of thrown caution out there. Just 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 be cautious of that. I don't know. Okay. You guys are all able to see the map in front of you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. so what you're looking at is, a, I mean, it's, it's definitely weird on your particular, uh, what you're currently seeing, but it'll, it'll fill in all the gaps as you, as you explore. Um, in front of you is a stone wall. This big flat edge that you're seeing here is a big stone wall. It looks mm-hmm. like the side of a house. Around the edge, you can see that you are in a cave. This is definitely a cave. You can see the ceiling above you. You can see the walls behind you and around you. Uh, this is definitely a cave, but it also looks like there's a building here in front of you. To your right, as you look down there, you can see that there is more wall that follows around, and there does appear to be some kind of structural uh, support beam here. I saw the same thing, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> saw our names over like, loud. Or a dungeon dragon. <laughs> and shot, don't bring no no spoilers. No, none of that. We're doing D and D stuff. <laughs> no, <we're laughs> yeah, let's let's focus on the D and D, not talk D&D. about random other media. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you're. You've, 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 at least Haiku has able to uh, has opened this door and come through the other side. The place where you think a magical ward would be well placed is the corner of this building because it is a huge choke point and it's close enough to trigger. You have not seen a magical ward, but something mm. about that area makes you as a spellcaster think I would, since this is all defensive, everything you've gone through so far seems very defensive. If I was going to put a magical ward, I would do it right here. Okay. Uh, I don't know how I'd convey that to the group, so I don't think I will. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, or is gonna is cast that... fine traps. Okay. And. Anything uh, that would well. inflict a sudden or undesirable effect that you would consider un- harmful or undesirable. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Oh. Okay, um. all right. It specifically says in it, the spell would sense an area affected by the alarm spell, a glyph of warding, a mechanical pit trap, etc., but not reveal a weakness in the floor, an unstable ceiling, or a hidden sinkhole. Okay, merely reveals that it's present. You don't learn the location of the trap, but you do learn the general nature of the danger posed by a trap that you sense. And it's within range that's also within line of sight. So... uh, Oh, I was going to ask, when I cast this, can I, like... Is it you do it once and then that's it? Or do I move around with it? So the duration is instantaneous. Okay. Which means that it happens immediately and it doesn't it doesn't continue, unfortunately. I think it's from if, your... How cool would it be though? It must be a high level spell as a version of this that you get to just keep for a while as you're walking just, around, like, just around. like danger sense, <laughs> danger sense. <laughs> um so what you've got is this immediate sense of danger, a sense of a horrible, dangerous fireball overwhelms you, but you're not sure where it's gonna come from. Wait, the sense of a fireball? <laughs> yeah. You're like, okay, something's going to explode. Guys, I, guys, I feel like a fireball might happen if we do anything. That's bad. I think that would then connect with me. I think it might be near the corner. I mean, that's where I do something like that. How do we how do we stop that? Yeah, I don't want to be on fire. <laughs> Is it like a like a physical thing? Do you see like a uh so you you are the spell with sense an area affected by it that would not reveal the nature of it. La, 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 la. But it includes anything that would, it's really difficult to understand what exactly this spell I'm gives you. Game. <laughs> That's, <a well> time. <laughs> That's true. Uh, so it reveals that a trap, but you don't learn the location. You do learn the general nature. Okay. Well, you will. You the general nature is that you sense that there is a magical trap that's going to cause some horrible explosion. 
Okay. I'll just convey that. There's a horrible trap. I'm gonna do explosion ease. Bad. Randall just completely freezes. <laughs> <laughs> you stuck? Do. do you yeah. know how to dispel magic? Uh, do I, Tom? It's a, uh, it's a it spell. Is a, it is a spell. It's a spell. It's a spell. Oh, uh, absolutely not, I'm afraid. Hmm. I mean, there's there would not be other ways to do it, though. You don't necessarily need to use magic. No. For example, you could spring the trap. For example. Will it happen more than once if it's magic, or does it just happen once? Oh. Good point. Would we know that? Someone could do an arcana check. I could help you talk through it, but I don't think I'd know. I could just help you talk about magic. I'll, uh, I'll do whatever I can. <clears throat> arcana check. Let's look can at I... what's spells your classes have. <laughs> <laughs> I think Dispel Magic is Sorcerer. I wouldn't have said that. But I might be wrong. Let me check. <clears throat> yeah, like all the spellcasters have Dispel Magic. I figure yeah. that's one of those things where like that would have been something like living the life that she lived like Dispelling Magic and um, like Darkness would have been on the like table of things to learn but she would have not done that because she would have focused on the healing well so. i wasn't so, le so much learning about uh, thinking about that as, as i much was the um uh, oh how much we might know about it yeah the, the spell that you're trying to learn about um should i see if it's in your spell artificer i, I can yeah i at third level when i i do have access to third level spells now i just didn't think yeah it. okay um so actually Romeo, you've rolled a 15 okay uh but you have advantage because you're being helped by neurally mm -hmm. oh. sorry i should have been more clear about what that's my intentions no, of helping fine, you fine. talk through things were. okay oh. there we go. Here, here are the hot rolls Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, today is price. haiku's day <laughs> um so you have uh access to a spell you got that you got third level spells now haven't you yeah yeah um so you have access to this spell actually uh, you're fairly confident that you know uh precisely what this spell could be it would be glyph of warding uh and you are aware that this is a spell that is usually placed in a particular spot usually goes off only once but is um often tied to one particular spell that will go off under certain conditions so it might be if someone goes in front of here, then this go this spell goes off, etc. Uh, you know that these things can usually be dispelled by the spell dispel magic, uh, but you do not have that readied, if unless I'm incorrect. Uh, I do not know. Uh, I'll, I'll just convey all that. No, that's fine. What was this? Like, glyph, uh, dispel magic. Glyph of glyph of warding and dispel that's magic. Good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's a it's a it's a glyph of warding. Probably isn't going to end well if we just ignore it and continue on. Uh, it would need to be dispelled. Do you know how Glyph of Warding is activated? Uh, it depends on the Glyph. Uh, uh, whoever cast it will have given it some kind of requirement or set of conditions to meet. Uh, I mean, it could it could just be as simple as uh, it detecting motions. I don't need to roll anything. Although it could be a little <laughs> more complicated, like, you know, it... it, it... Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, I forget, it, so I I forget that the stop. sound alerts... Yeah, I, don't yeah. I forget that the sound alerts aren't working for you guys. So that was very well timed. <laughs> I, got, I got mine working again. So <laughs> it was funny because I heard... I heard I Jack need to roll and Jack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, should, it could be that motion just sets it off or something like more complicated, like it has to detect... A living being, or something, something magical, for example. Do you think if I were to use mirror image, would one of the duplicates trigger it? Uh, maybe. Possibly, yeah. I mean, I could, I could also try send the, a turret in and see if that sets it off. Uh, do you, Do you think it might be coded 
for people because given the talisman on the door <gasps> and i have the talisman maybe even though the door is open you should put the talisman in there and unlock it and see if it goes away because if it's if these are all defenses then knowing that the visitor is welcome might be the best the, the thing is that it's it's very still very much a I'm, I'm pretty certain it's there but i don't think we'd be able to tell if it was disarmed by that method i don't think no but, but it's, it's worth a try yeah yeah it's worth a try okay i want to like is there is it still possible to find the bit in the door where the talisman goes and try and yeah the door's not like open all bit. the way but it's, it's it's easy enough for you to just kind of okay. clock weirdly fits perfectly how odd how strange that is um oh, dink. oh what a winky dink Ooh, is it sorry oh, 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 oh. sorry i have an idea <laughs> okay. he likes it when a talisman goes right in oh. <laughs> <laughs> fits right that? off of that do <laughs> the uh the talisman fits perfectly into the slot and giving it a, a gentle twist does appear to unlock some kind of mechanism the door now rolls quite contentedly on its uh, axis and you think you could move it quite easily. Uh, that was quite pretty helpful. So Aura said that they saw a fireball. Mm -hmm. Correct. Well, they, 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 they got oh, the general the sense. They, general, yeah. they got the general sense that some horrible bad explosion is going to go off. Okay. Uh... Oh, whether you change your explosion or shit. Uh... Hey, weird question, completely random. What um, <laughs> damage resistance did you give yourself this morning when you were cheating your <laughs> Fire! Oh, interesting. Oh, hey, that's, what just, that's what I'm curious. That's what I'm just contemplating. <laughs> uh... <laughs> wow. Let's do so it. So many Go clinky on. dinks. Interesting. Go on. I'm going to approach the corner. You're going to approach the um, corner. I was, yeah. oh, I was going to be what? quite. <laughs> so, all right. Haiku, haiku steps into the. He cro he, sorry, oh, they, no, they cross the boundary. Okay. What, what are you going to say? Okay. Go on. Haiku gives us a warning, so I'm going to move one of the doors now that they slide easily. Like, it's just so the it's one. Fully... This is the one. It's the one door. Oh, it's just the one. Okay, well, I move it so it's, it's like wide enough for us to get through still, but I move it so that we can stand the other side of the door. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I would like that. Also, I, some kind of yeah cover. <laughs> this is going to be my plan because I can dodge project like explosions with um evasion. Sure. Uh huh. <laughs> so you were just going to hope that. You... <laughs> I, I hope the talisman worked and then hope that you could dodge it. Like, well, Just go running that. through. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So, what's, so what's, I mean, I think I know what Haiku's plan is, but would you like to describe this to the, your party? Because to them, it looks an awful lot like you're about to walk into a, a what could probably be some kind of explosion without any real justification. And we walk away from explosions here. I'm sorry. Can you <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, I, I, I haven't explained what my tattoo does yet because I've been in grump mode. Yep. Mm -hmm. Since. So you well. Do you think your party's just going to allow you to walk into danger, possibly an explosion, without you justifying that it's going to be okay? Probably. I don't think they could stop me. To be honest. Uh... I don't think we could stop him, and also we do know that his sense of self-preservation is pretty strong. Yeah, their yeah. sense of okay. self-preservation is pretty true. Strong. All right, okay. Well, I mean, so you're 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 going to turn uh, to them and basically say, "Close the door." Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Well, if we were like, just keep your distance. I've got an idea, and away I go. <laughs> and I'm going to hold an action to distance spell he uh, uh, cure wounds. <laughs> 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 just kind of peeking around the corner. <laughs> Of okay. the door. So what I what I so I've been reading up on some spellcasts and stuff recently, and I just ha also happened to read up on readying action. Readying an action means that you are casting it. The second that you say that you're reading it, you are casting it. You are holding the spell in your hand and just releasing it as a reaction. Yeah. So I'm just clarifying that that is you have cast that spell. It it takes a slot. Yeah. 
Okay. I'm okay, just cool. going to do a first level. Just more that's of like fine. a keep them alive. I just that's just more of a of a me being like that's a that's a thingy thingy bob bob. Yeah, I think uh, you've had me mark them off every time. I think I've just always asked or something because we okay. didn't know. Okay. I clicked roll, but didn't do. We got much. a we got a tip. We got a tip. We got a tip from someone called Woogie Woogie. <laughs> I wonder who that is. <laughs> Thank you for the ten pound tip, Yol Goodly. Yol Goodly. Oh, those are Oogie Oogie what? A uh, woogie woogie. A woogie woogie. A woogie woogie. A woogie woogie. That's a tortoiseism. That's a that's a tortoiseism. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, love you, Torty. Thank you, Torty. Uh, okay, so again, I've got Nugget on this side of the wall simply because there's not enough space on the other side of it. Um, yeah. But Haiku steps through the stone door to the other side, and you guys rapidly <laughs> close close the door. <laughs> to cover yourselves as haiku stands out onto the other side and the door is closed behind them they step towards the corner where they suspected a glyph of warding would be and sure enough a colossal explosion erupts from the side of this building filling the entirety of this corridor at least the the the, the front of this building not the room that you guys are in with flame that just erupts and just cascades up the wall into the cave mouth uh, and or the cave ceiling and around the corner to a small extent. You guys in the tunnel are singed slightly and it gets very, very hot very, very quickly, but you are not damaged. You're A-OK. -okay. The, the cover that you've got is sufficient for me to not bother with giving you saves. Uh, haiku. Yep. You want to describe to me what you're going to do here, buddy? Uh, I will... I actually can't remember what exactly... About, uh, I will use uh, is it reaction? Yeah, mm -hmm. a reaction to absorb all. Well, I can absorb any fire damage, and I'm, I can heal off of it. But I'm at max health. I do use You're at max health. So what you do is essentially say, "I'm gonna do a thing." <laughs> <laughs> they close the door behind you. These guys just hear a. <laughs> a massive explosion mm. flames go everywhere the heat rises ex like to, to extremes and you are consumed by flame this morning you set your tattoo of, of absorption to make you resistant to fire damage which would have given you half of the damage but it also as a reaction allows you to not only become immune to that damage type which you can only do once a day if i'm correct yeah. but also heal from is it half of the damage that you would have received yeah so in one reaction, you managed to just stand there coated in flame, just head to toe, just <laughs> oh! <laughs> uh, for I, a split second, you managed to make yourself immune to all of the fire damage. I, I like to think that I absorb it through the tattoo, like, like suck it all up almost, like the oh. absorb element spell does. Yeah, yeah, neat. Uh, I, I, I know with the absorbing tattoo, the thing is like, it loses its color once it absorbs i think sure. it's co cooler if it's like a, almost a blank tattoo first and then when i when it absorbs it, it fills up yeah, it yeah. then turns red in this case yes i like that a lot that's very yeah. cool okay well the explosion goes off you are completely unscathed not a single singe upon you although it would make a lot of sense for just you as a person to be fine and all of your like back stuff to just be consumed in fire right now <laughs> But that would be a real shame. So, <laughs> so you're fine. You don't have a really valuable book. <laughs> <laughs> After all, it's that. okay. It's a magic book. They yeah. can't burn. Yeah. <laughs> but only, 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 only two more, uh, two more hours to sink into this book. It just burns in front of you. <laughs> the, la the last couple pages of the of the book are now burnt off. There's yeah. a singed ash in there instead. <laughs> that is extremely badass for you to have just been like, I'll take this one. <laughs> uh, cool context. guys walk into explosions. <laughs> Just context, like I've, taken, silhouette. I've taken fire resistance every day so far in case I can heal myself <laughs> from my own turret. Oh, oh very nice. Okay. I very love good. it. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I, I trust that you uh you had that written down today. Not a single yeah, doubt yeah, in my mind. Down. Um so you have just absorbed all of this extremely loud, very wide explosion. 
and all of your friends have just heard that. And are you okay? Are you gonna check what's happening here? Throw the door back open. Yeah. Hello. Haiku. How do you look, Haiku? Uh, a bit singed. Still grumpy. <laughs> but, I'll, uh, but I'll probably just give a uh, thumbs up. <laughs> well, a glowing red thumbs up. I'll do it with my Job right done. hand. You know, in uh, in Dark Souls Three, so this is a reference not everyone's going to get. You know, when you uh, kill a boss and you become embered. Oh, yeah. that's cool. I imagine, I imagine that's the thing. So in Dark Souls Three, you are you're an ashen one, and when you kill a boss, you get this thing called, or you can use a consumable for it, which makes you glow as if you are singed by fire all of the time on like all of your body, and it just like, it increases your max health basically. But it's uh, it's a really cool mechanic that kind of just makes it very visually obvious that you are like enhanced in some way. And I just love the idea of Haiku just constantly being a little bit on fire now because you've used your <laughs> absorb flame for the day. That's fucking cool. I was AFK, Torto, no, you missed it. Oh no. Haiku, Haiku, <laughs> Haiku walked in front of a glyph of warding that had a fireball stored into it. Uh, and use their reactionary uh, absorb elements to not take a single point of damage. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking sick. Very cool. It did work yesterday. I would have given, I would have given you inspiration for it if you didn't already have two inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> you stack it in the past couple of Fucking years. use the inspiration, jeez. <laughs> you can use it on. <laughs> just kind of like, um, How'd you do that? A uh, uh, tattoo. You know what we got from uh, Margaret? Sick. Could have yeah. said. What did it do? Uh, I you know, absorbed all the flames through, through, through the tattoo with my hand. Wow. It's fine. Through the fire and flames, we do carry on. <laughs> well, I think that's I a good place as any to uh, to to end our game. <sighs> I apologize for interrupting Katie. That was mostly a time-related thing because we're at twenty two oh three. Would you like to say something? Oh yeah, I was just gonna say, can I give Ginny an inspiration? I <laughs> <laughs> <you> appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> that was very good. Okay. You uh. We'll we'll, uh, we'll end our game there today. We've uh, we've broken into the mouth of gargoyles uh, after some time dealing with a slight incline and some mud. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, slight incline. <laughs> <laughs> I like how qu how quick we dealt with the the fireball trap. Yeah. yeah, going into darkness. Oh, that's too much. <laughs> Didn't give us a tattoo for mud. Gave us a tattoo for fire. <laughs> that's right. You're true. true. You're not wrong, mate. Not wrong, mate. Uh, well, I hope you all had a very good game. Mm -hmm. Well played, everybody. I had a lot of fun. Um, I really, I think it was a uh, that was some classic D and D there. Classic. That's what that was. It was classic D and D. A, a little bit of right. some shenanigans, <laughs> some traps. So uh, like one monster, <laughs> you club to death. <laughs> uh, lovely. Those piercers are like classic low-level creatures that just hang on ceilings and occasionally drop off and try to murder you. I've and, never uh, heard of them before. That's fun. Have you not? They're fun low-level creatures. But if they <laughs> if they hit a, like a, a really low-level character from a distance, because the, the damage they do is based on the distance that it drops from, they can insta-kill low level characters oh. like they are rough if you're the right level uh <laughs> but okay all right we're in a big enough cave <laughs> don't worry in a big enough cave yeah mm -hmm. okay oh well uh i think perhaps conveniently evan i think has just gone live oh how convenient evan wow. suspicious <laughs> suspiciously convenient <laughs> <laughs> Great stream. <Interesting>. Goes live. <laughs> uh, what? Me. Crazy. That's crazy. Uh, wow. 
I have an advert right now, Far Cry 6, so I can't see you probably making a face on your stream. <laughs> maybe, he's still in his, maybe he's doing a starting stream thing. Maybe that's what's on right now. Although I, I have been in Evan's stream before and he's been watching who he's about to raid and you've heard the stream in the background. So maybe if we go, if we were over there now, we'd be hearing me talking. Oh God, no. Is that what you're doing, Evan? Or are you on a starting screen? He's starting the scene screen, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's on a starting scene screen. I don't know. <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> let's raid Evan. Hopefully he's streaming. I don't know. Maybe he'll just be... <laughs> maybe he'll just all be chilling. It'd be really awkward if we didn't stream... Uh, didn't raid Evan now. Yeah, we're like, yeah. <laughs> anyway. anyway <laughs> <she's there>. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's been fun anyway, guys. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully see you next week, unless something horrible comes up. Or, or um, average, it means we can't be here. Or something normal, you know, something, whatever. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> medium. Yeah. Something medium. Something medium uh, happens. Go join uh, Tom's one shot. There's oh, yeah. one spot left, and there'll be a new one shot that comes up in the next couple of days or something if you want yeah. to join that. But some spooky DD times. Okay. Just some, some murdery murder. Yeah. All right. Okay. Medium murder. All right, let's go raid Evan. Go put some hearts in there and yeah. go hang out and do cowboy things. All right. <laughs> Bye. 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 Yeah.